Oh, let's hope this works. It has been a while, gang. Too long of a while. We are going to be broadcasting today. I had a request. Concerning National Pastime 3, I have a fan. A huge fan too, gang. Just so you know. Alright. So let's get this sucker set up here and we'll keep we'll go from there here, okay? Alright. Because it's not Chicago and LA, that's for sure. Alright, so I need to go back into my channel, give you a sec here. Not up, not not. not, 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 not. I'm going to go to the Creative Studio. Thank you. And I will fix this right now. Give me a sec. Not a lot of practice, guys. I apologize. All right. Come on. There we go. All right. This is... St. Louis. And Tracy Stallard. Versus the Cincinnati Reds. This is June 24th, 1965, just so everybody knows. All right, it is Tracy Stallard versus Jim O'Toole. I do believe this is a Sunday game. Probably not, but I'm close. I'm not checking things too hardly, guys. I do apologize for that. Today I do. I am, like I said, I'm way out of practice. This is for Eric of Higher Ground Gaming. Just so I'd let everybody know. And we use Rollerball for our dice now, which I think is totally cool. And for that, I want to thank Uncle Ron. <coughs> And I always put this up in the corner. There we go, just like that. All right. In the background, by the way, Eric, I always keep the actual game up for my historical games, in case anybody has to know. All right, this is what I do. I'm running, like I said, I'm running a little slow. I do apologize. I know we're already three minutes in. Okay, so let's go to the scoreboard. Let's just see scores. I don't want those. June 24th. 1965. Now, in the actual game, St. Louis tore him up 11 to 4. That does not necessarily happen here, just so everybody knows. Okay? Now that I'm watching from here, okay, that's nice. That's cute. We know I'm working. Let's go watch it from rear. Let's go watch it from the front. So, yeah, you guys, I can see exactly what you guys are watching, okay? And let's find me. <sighs> yeah, I ain't gonna follow me find me. Okay, so hold on here. There we go. All right. All right, come on. All right, my channel there we go, that's what I want right there. Alright. I'm operating off two computers, guys. That's why I'm having troubles. All right. Okay, and that's what we're looking at right there. There we go. All right. Again, I apologize, kitties. Okay. So, as I promised... And I try to be a man of my word, okay? If you cannot see it, you're not going to. I've got a, I've got ball roller 1.04, courtesy of Uncle Ron. Thank you very much, Uncle Ron. It's probably a, a great dice, dice rolling uh, concept. 
Definitely the Cardiac League is in. There is no questions asked about that. Now, Ron, my question to you is on this game. Here's what I usually have it set to. I got set to roll time of nine. Nine seconds, I guess what that is, if that long. That's what I have. So that's what I've done. Uh, I had it up to 13. <coughs> Fortunately, I was having cardiac games going into the 15th inning at zero. So, without further ado, here's our lineups today for the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, Eric, I see you go over here, okay? It's nice. Try this instead. Sure, sure I, I've got Brock up there, okay? Take your right mouse, click on it. See where his last 10 games batting? Lou Brock, batting first, St. Louis Cardinals. So far this season. <sighs> His last three, ten games. Ah, who took this out? Ooh, something's not right here. That be does. Okay, that's, the numbers up here is pitching averages, by the way, Eric. That's what they are, okay? So far, it's the sixth, second game. Obviously, we play more than that. His betting average, current betting average of 336 with eight home runs, 38 RBIs. He has struck out 42 times, rather high. He does have 23 stolen bases, and he's been caught 17 times. His last 10 games, though, he's on a tear. He's batting 370. He's currently sitting on a nine-game hitting streak, it appears, from here. I wish the best of was he went four for five with the Pirates on the 15th of June. And with a triple, he has had two home runs during this time frame, seven RBIs. As the season goes on, may he had a little bit of a dip, but otherwise, and that's only to a whopping 291. He's batting 336. Is he in first place in the National League? No. But another player is who's playing today. Who's first place all over the place? That is Lou Brock. Dick Grote will be playing shortstop, batting second. Currently he's batting 305. Has no home runs, 30 RBIs. The game will not allow me to play 30 RBIs. That's the only thing I like about the game. If you didn't get a home run, I do, but I don't. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, DDBB, and I think uh, it's probably one of the few that did it. As long as they had 9999, 9999, they got their home run. Happens on occasion. Otherwise, no home runs, 30 RBIs, very low strikeout in walks. What, 19 only so far this season, 22 walks. Has, strong, has managed to get a stolen base in, but again, he is hitting 305. Has 16 doubles, five triples in the league. Phil Gagliano is playing right field today for the Cardinals. He normally beats the beginning. Some serious starts. Uh, he was sporadic for a while. He's only played 40 games. Batting 264. Has four home runs, 15 RBIs. His last 10, he's batting 243, so he's pretty much staying. He's a little below average. His May was his big month uh, when he came in. Does have five doubles and, like I said, a triple. So he has 10. He had, does have 10 extra base hits. Batting fourth is Cleet Boyer. And I can put that over here too while I'm at it. Cleet Boyer is batting 230. When he does hit, it's been clutch. I have made him the player of the game for each one of these three games. I know I have. <laughs> and if not, go check the, into the Delphi forms and you will find out. His last 10 games, though, he's on again. He's another one's on a roll. He got knocked out 0 for 2. Had a walk and a strikeout his last time out there on the 23rd. That's what I'm saying. I'm believing that this might be a Sunday game. Let me take a look here real quick. If no one doesn't mind, please. It is a Thursday game. Okay. Oop, that's not what I want. Okay. And back to here. All right. But he's hit three, three, of, his eight, uh, eight, three of his eight home runs have been within the last ten games. So he is starting to get his bat back. Carries a 2-3-1 average still for the entire month of June. That is Cleet Boyer. Bill White is batting fifth. The first baseman heading towards is still out there, coming in from the 50s. One of the first black players to play for the St. Louis Cardinals, I believe. I can look that up, and I will. Okay, he in his last 10 games, well, he's been in a bit of a slump. He's only batting 231. His average is 254, 14 home runs, 33 RBIs over here at Sportsman's Park. Does have 12 doubles, has yet to hit a triple this season. In his last 10 games, like I say, he's been in a terrible slump. 10 strikeouts, 6 walks, especially his last 3. The Reds have just coarse-collared him. 
He's gone three for 13, only scored two runs, has seven strikeouts and a walk. He has struck out 49 times so far this, far, so far this season. And we're going to look him up real fast for you guys. I can do that, and you guys don't know it. Yep, but nope, Bill White actually started 1958 with the, or 1956 with the, the New York Giants. 1957, he was drafted, played, uh, spent a year with the military, came back late 1958, and he had to move from New York to San Francisco. Been to the Cardinals since 1959, stayed with them and through the early 1960s. Played with Philadelphia for three years, and he finished his career with St. Louis. That is Bill White's career. Man, Jelly hits about 286, and like I said, he is mired in a slump. He averages on a 162-game basis, 20 home runs, so he's pretty much on pace. He did quite a bit with the Cardinals at the old Sportsman's Park. It appears that once they moved over to, actually with the Philadelphia, though, 66, 67, 68, so he played also at the old Shy Park. <laughs> Coming up next for the St. Louis Cardinals, and batting sixth is Jerry Buchek. I hope I'm pronouncing that name right, too. If anybody knows, let me know. Jerry Buchek is batting 243. Recent addition to the Cardinals, as you can see, batting 244. Actually, he's batting 243 his last 10 games. Has a home run. He got his first home run last game. I believe it was a grand slam, too, believe it or not. On the, actually played on the 22nd. Has 10 hits, of which 6 of them are extra base hits. Now, the stats I don't have here, slanky percentage, though I can get it. So, I'm not worried. Okay? So, by the way, for National Pastime 3, for any of you who know the stats game, the whole 9 yards, this is not sabermetric metrics. Even in my 2017 season, you will not see sabermetrics. There is no war. There is no, how many runs could he have scored on, his, on the amount of outs that he made? That don't happen, okay? Those are nice stats if you're a general manager of a baseball team. We're fans. <coughs> Betting seventh, Mr. Baseball himself, Bob Uecker. Bob Euchre, who also you guys know carried an average uh, just barely over the Mendoza line, actually has a batting average here of 229. Been in about 22 games. Ah, thank you, Cyrus. Has two doubles, two home runs this season, eight RBIs, has struck out 12. She's managed to keep his strikeout count actually low. Last time out, went 2-4 for four against the Braves. Didn't do much else than that, but he got in the game, and he caught. Mike Shannon, who is, I still think, is the color commie, commentator for the St. Louis Cardinals, unless he left when Jack Buck died, is batting 160. He's below the Mendoza line, but the Mendoza line was not known in 1965. Currently, he does bat that way, since so the way the season's gone for him this year. They have not been, the, the, the dice gods have not been friendly. He does have a home run. And he is the center fielder. He became the third baseman, I believe, when Cleet Boyer left. And pitching for the St. Louis Cardinals is Tracy Stallard. Tracy Stallard. Is famous because he gave up Ted Williams. He, he's the man who gave up the last hit, last home run of Ted Williams' career. Pitcher's batting 143 his last 10 games. Uh, he hasn't thrown much in June. Just the way the games went, he did a lot of uh, relief work. Has been in 18 games, has 24 play appearances, struck out five, and has given up an RBI. The opposition pitching for the St. Louis Cardinals is Jim Olsen. Let me look that up, by the way, because I think Tracy Stallard just came over here to the Cardinals. Hang on here. Nope, that's what it was. All right. He had a break. He only pitched 40 games. Interesting. All right. Is the pitcher, starting pitcher against him is Jim O'Toole. Jim O'Toole is, has, currently has a record of, his last eight games, he's been 3-1, he's been three and one, has a few no-Ds. And this one here, I'm going to have to go look. Sorry, guys. 
as of this time of season, so I gotta go find them. I do apologize for this. Only because it's the only, the only drawback. I, I can get them elsewhere, but I'm not gonna mess with the game. I don't want to right now. Oh! Okay, I'll tell you what I can do about that. Alright. Jim O'Toole had a record 1965 of 3 and 10. Is what he had. There we go. Okay. I should I go back out. Okay, I can do that. All right. Okay, see so if I can set this up. Hold on here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Da, 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 da. Nope. Ooh, look what I can do. Can I put them together? <laughs> okay, it's not letting me come up for some reason. I can't remember how to do it. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. I did not know. Let's put this down. So I'm giving you facts and you can't even show them to you. I'll be darned. I can't remember why. I can't remember how to do this, and I'll be all set. So don't worry about it. And if anybody re re remembers how to do it for me, let me know. Okay, but Jim O'Toole's last eight appearances, he got in. He's been in 39 innings, last eight games. Given up 20 runs, 18 of them were earned. 11 walks, 21 strikeouts. Has given up five long balls for his career so far. And right now he is currently 5-2 and two for the season. So he was 3-1. and one. And as you can see here, his entire schedule's here. He is five and two. That's my fault. I apologize. Last game out was an OD. Gave up three runs against the Chicago Cubs on the 20th of June. And that is the starting lineup and the starting pitcher for the uh, for the St. Louis Cross Cincinnati Reds. We will come up with the Cincinnati Reds lineup when they're due up the bat. Okay. So, without further ado, gang, here we go. First pitch of the game. Lou Brock is up to bat. Welcome to Crosley Field, Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Ohio. Where, for this game here, and I took it out. I'll be darned. What did I do that for? Okay. God, am I, I am unprepared, guys. My God, I am so, so sorry. It has been probably, well, almost two months since I've broadcast a game. Uh... I got burnt out doing other things. So again, like I say, I apologize. For this game here, there was 10,986 game on night game that lasted about three hours. As like I said, the original game, St. Louis won 11 to 4. First pitch of the game, here we go. And it will be a 64 coming up to Lou Brock. Lou Brock gets down there, and Jim O2 the fire ones gets the black on the outside, and he strikes out Brock. Struck him out on the black. Brock, that was a ball, just glared back, and if you see the umpire's going to have a wide strikeout range today. Due up is Dick Grote. Dick Grote, as we have said, is currently batting 265. No home runs, 30 RBIs. Has a slugging percentage of 414. I've got it right there. I'll be darned. I like this. And the call is it is a 52. Dick Grote hits out there towards third base side. Ken Porter stares it up, fires over on the hop over towards Bill White. Makes the play, and it is two down here in the top of the first inning here at Crosley Field, Cincinnati. Due up to bat is Phil Gagliano. Phil Gagliano so far this year is batting 264. Does have a slight percentage of 421, so we are here we go. And this one will be a 63. And Phil Gagliano hits out a routine fly ball. Wait for it to come on down is the great Lou Brock. And that is it. A 1-2-3 inning for the St. Louis Cardinals. Coming up to bat for Cincinnati will be Tommy Harper, Pete Rose, and Vida Pinson. Now let's introduce the lineups for the Cincinnati Reds. And we'll introduce Tracy Stallis' pitching record. For the Cincinnati Reds, batting first is Tommy Harper, another known stolen base. Though he wasn't so well known here, but he's got an excellent stolen base average. He's been caught once. 15 stolen bases. Currently, he is batting. 
249, but we'll get to that when we get there. He's batting 249, seven home runs, 25 RBIs, does have eight doubles. He's more than crashing singles. Singles, sorry about that. And he, so far, his last 10 games, like I said, batting 279, does have a home run, three RBIs, does not show the stolen bases. Cyrus, uh, no, don't do that. Okay, three walks, he has struck out 11 times, he just has been on half the bat. For the month of June, though, he went from batting barely over $200. Says up there. He's been batting 330 for the entire month of June. Definitely a warm weather hitter. Batting 330, two home runs, seven RBIs. Not much on the production side, but he also bats leadoff. Batting second is this fellow named Rose. I think we've all heard about him. Currently, he is batting 325. Again, he does not lead the National League in hitting. He does have nine doubles, three triples, five home runs, so he's got a decent bat. Five stolen bases. Uh, it does not show, unfortunately, sacrifice hits, sacrifice flies. I'm not going to worry about it. Sacrifice hits show up on occasion on the fly balls. We see those. Currently, though, he is in a, if you want to call that a mini slump, he has gone 0 for 8 his last two games. This after the first game, the doubleheader at St. Louis, he went 1 for 3 with a home run and 1 RBI, and he was walked twice. That is Mr. Rose. Coming up is the coming up third is Vita Pinson. Vita Pinson currently is batting 301 for our Cincinnati Reds. Has 18 home runs, 56 RBIs. This man is definitely on. Could be a possible uh, MVP at the end of the year. He's so far for June. He's batting 380. Another one's gone warm weather. Six home runs, 22 RBIs. Cincinnati was mired in a bit of a slump. I think I can find that. <laughs> And he has, he, so far this season, he has 11 doubles, 18 home runs, though, no triples. Very interesting. He has 11, has 11 stolen bases, though, so he's doing quite well at that. Batting fourth. We'll have a little chat about this, man. This is his last season in the National League, as everybody knows from history. One of the worst trades ever, Frank Robinson from Milt Pappas. Frank Robinson so far has 18 home runs. He is tied for the National League lead. 59 RBIs, I believe he leads the National League. 342, he is in second place to that Aaron fella. I believe that's how it looks. No, or, yeah, or, or, or his partner, Rico Cardi. One of the two is leading is leading the National League in hitting. 20 doubles, 2 triples, 18 home runs. Definitely an all-around ball player. Everybody knows him well. He has been playing right field. Um, surprising, one of my other games that I play, plays a lot of first base. So, very, very surprising. Decent bat. He's gone one for four most of the time his last few bat bats here. Nothing much. One home run, two RBIs on the 23rd against the Cardinals. Batty fifth is a Mr. Coleman. Gordy Coleman, who has four home runs, 30 RBIs, batting 336. He's a steady bat. Does have uh, 11 doubles, one triple, four home runs. The Cincinnati really does try to spread it out, and they're doing pretty good at it over here at Crosley. In, their last, in one of the few seasons, they're going to be finishing up at Crosley very shortly. Been in 37 games, has not played him in full, but that's the way the schedule goes, kiddies. And that's how we play it. Okay. Batting sixth is a future Major League Manager, Darren Johnson. Darren Johnson currently is batting 243, has hit 11 home runs, 37 RBIs, struck out 43 times. He does have a high strikeout ratio. Uh, basically almost 4 to 1 with his walks. Has 64 hits, 12 doubles. And he is currently batting 290, batting through his last 10 games. He's trying to get the average back up. He started April at 294, and it just took a dive in May. Johnny Edwards is our catcher. Actually, the Yankees, I believe. Actually, no, I've got him right here. Currently batting 311 for Cincinnati. 11 home runs, 22 RBIs. Been involved in 37 games here with the Red Legs. Hits a lot of singles. Was shot out on the 22nd, also by the St. Louis Cardinals. Did well against the Cubs. He went 4 for 12, 3 home runs. So he had definitely had a season against the Cubs on, on a weekend. Leo Cardenas is batting, playing shortstop, batting... Eighth. This is before the Dave Concepcion days. Batting 289. 41 strikeouts. Definitely out there. Has yet to steal a base for the Cincinnati Reds. 69 hits. 12, including 12 doubles. 
But two for three last time out against the Cardinals, and he is batting 294 in his last 10 games. And the pitcher, Jim O'Toole. That's currently batting 167 for the Reds. So uh, for any of you DHs, hello, Al Red Sox fan. How are you doing? I figured you'd be watching the football. I thought I saw you over the football game. I was not going to interfere with you guys, okay? I just apologized because I didn't want to ruin Ron's broadcast, okay? Because I promised Eric uh, from, this, from Higher Ground Gaming that I would do this because I wanted to show him what goes on and how he could do it. I'm not doing very well, but I can explain it. And um, I'll explain that. And Eric, I've done all this, by the way, in one of the easiest ways. When you go to your ball players on the right-hand side, okay, what you want to do is you click on, use your right-hand click, and then it shows you display card, which is shows the very same card that's on the left. Shows you the last 10 games batting, and shows you the last eight games hitting or pitching. So I've got, I saw where I was able to get Jim O'Toole's card out. He has a whip, by the way, had a whip of 141, ERA of 354, along with his 5 and 2 record. And he has given up a, he has a 280 batting average against. Tracy Stallard, who is the pitcher for the Cardinals, currently has a record of 6 and 2, or 5 and 2 here, as you can see. Has yet to win a game in June. Did not play, pitch a lot in June, so he must have been out on the DL. Because I play him as I, I play him as I get him. And as you can see, he, or also he did a lot of relief work. So for real, he didn't do real well for the Cardinals. But um, otherwise, nah, he, uh, for here he's doing quite well. He's 6-2, and two, ERA of uh, 336, whip of 1.12, which I like. I still enjoy the whip. And he's only, bat, bat is only hitting 212 against him. He has 41 strikeouts to go with 22 walks. He has given up nine long balls. He's been involved in almost 70 innings, 69 and two-thirds. So he has started eight games, so he's, I've got him involved in 10 others. He does have two saves for the season. Has yet to blow a save, though I don't record blow saves in 1965 because that was not a stat. So that is our other side of the house. Coming up to bat is Tommy Harper. Tommy Harper is currently batting 292, seven home runs, 25 RBIs, does have a slugging percentage of 360. Here is the pitch. It is double nickel. Get over there. 55. And Tommy Harper hits it hard, but right straight at Dick Groat. Groat's able to field a cleanly fire over towards White, and there is one down. Oh, good. I just called the entire ins and outs to the wrong guy, to the wrong team. Okay, I do well. Okay, top the first inning. Reverse. All right, here we go. So what I did in the top first inning is Dick Groach ground out actually should have been to Darren Johnson, not Ken Boyer. Sorry about that. And it was it was Johnson. I was looking at the wrong team. Well, they both had the same colors. That is my fault entirely. What a way to blow what a way to blow it right off the bat, guys. <laughs> Gagliano actually flew out to Tommy Harper. Alright. Batting second will be Peter E. Rose. Peter E. Rose. So far, it's batting 304 currently for the Cincinnati Reds. And here we go. The pitch by Stallard is. And that is a 13. And Rose is walked on four straight balls. Tracy Stallard is not taking a chance. Rose will take first. This, by the way, um, my friend, okay, this is Little C. All right. This is Little C. Little C is exactly what it is, okay? I am not controlling um, the stolen bases. There's a reason why, and you're seeing it when you're playing your game, okay? Every time somebody gets a hit or a walk, they're getting it eligible for a stolen base, okay? And I know in here you can actually try to make attempts to steal bases going from second to third by clicking on the player, I believe, like I could do, like you, like you, like you do here, okay? And like we do here. We can try to steal. All right, I don't do that here, as you can see. All right. This is what we have. I remove all restrictions, and we're all set. It's a wide-open game. That's why I do a uh, little C. And it does get wide open. If you've seen my broadcast, they get wide open, and I live for it. Played one, did not broadcast it, but I flipped it over to the other guys. To show them what kind of double plays we have. No disrespect, Al. I apologize. 
Okay, so, but it's not being disrespectful, but it was a 2-2-3 two, two, pop-up. Second to, the second back to first, the guy was trying to run, and he got nailed. Beta Pinson's coming up, batting 297 so far. Has a slugging percentage of 534. As you can see, it is up in the upper echelon of the league. Here's the pitch. 63. And that is, he hits out, he hits out towards center field. Come racing on in, is our center fielder. Mike Shannon, Mike Shannon gets it up there and gets that ball at the knees on a basket catch. Three down, a 1-2-3 inning for the St. Louis Cardinals for the Cincinnati Reds at the end of one. It is a scoreless game. Coming up the bat for the Cardinals will be Ken Boyer, Bill White, and Jerry Buchick. Oh, take it back. Two down. Okay, Craig. Okay. And I yell ball players. Frank Robinson's up. Frank Ross is batting 278, 18 home runs. He was up there at the, at the 300, oh, 342, sorry about that. And has slip search 667. Here we go. That is a 13, and he's going to be walked. Tracy Stellis being awful cautious this game. Both batters, the, both, both the better heavier hitters are at first and second. Now Frank Robinson's in there. Gordy Coleman is due to bat. Okay, here we go, yeah. Gordy Coleman is up. Gordy Coleman is currently batting 336. Has a slight They all have good slight They are getting good, good chuck on the ball. Tracy Stallard here is the bound. He is in the stretch. There is two down, and Coleman's ready to go. Here is the pitch. Another 13. That's going to be a walk. The diamond is loaded. And Tracy Stallard has to load the bases on walks. Has yet to do the other thing. Due up is Darren Johnson. Darren Johnson's batting 243. This on base says those two saves, some which is not bad. He obviously does get a walks. Tracy Stallard, so far this game has, has two us and three walks. Here is the pitch to Johnson. 26 and Johnson hits it out. Okay. On the fly out, hitting it over towards left field. Luke Rock is waiting to grab it, and that is. Three down. Base for loaded Cincinnati wasted a perfectly golden opportunity. No runs, no hits. Three runners left on base at the end of one. It is 0-0. Zero, zero. Coming up to bat will be Ken Boyer, Bill White, and Jerry Buchik. Ken Boyer so far this season is batting, to, is batting 230. Has over 262 uh, plate appearances. Current at Current slate percentage is three to one. He is the Cardinals. Probably just came off a. Um, did he? I think he did. Came off an MP, MVP season. I think he did. Let me look. I can usually find this stuff real easy. There's his MVP. Ken Boy does have an MVP award out here. 1964, he what he did win the Most Valuable Player Award when he batted 295, 119 RBIs, 24. He was an all they voted for all round ball players back then. His fielding stats at third base were pretty decent. Had a 951 fielding percentage at third base. Very well done, but he won the MVP. We don't look at wars, we don't care. Okay. So here we go, guys. Here we go. And at the bottom, top second, Ken Boyer's at the bat. Here is the pitch. That is a 15. And Ken Boyer hits it out in towards center field right over the shortstop head. Drops on in. Coming on to get that ball is our left field. Tommy Harper, Ken Boyer will stay at first base. So the first of the game goes to the St. Louis Cardinals in the top second. And due up the bat is Bill White. Bill White, who can't hit pop, does have a 254 batting average coming out here. Jim O'Toole is in the D range. However, the rule is, Eric, five runs or five innings minimum. That way the pitchers do get credit. After the fifth inning and if they haven't reached, you know, if they haven't reached that stage, in eight, if, they get to, if they're in a D rate, D rating like Jim O'Toole is right now, after the fifth inning, it doesn't matter how many runs he's given up unless it's zero. If a runner reaches second base on a hit, or crossed the second base by a hit by another batter, I relieve the pitcher. 
So my complete game ratio in 1965 is lower, but I still get them. If he reaches third on, a, on walks, like just happened in the second inning, I will relieve the pitcher. I use the infield in rule a lot. Coming up, though, is Bill White. What I don't have on here, and this is where Cyrus could come in and help me again one more time, is the butt reading on these cards. And if they're not here, I know I'm going to find them elsewhere. Okay, so here we go. And we are ready. Everybody's up the proposal there. And that is a 14 to Bill White. Possibly he's got himself. He may have, looks like he may have got a piece of the ball. He sure did. That is heading out towards right left field. And he got that way towards that wall. Harper has to go back there at the warning track. At the wall. And leaps up, grabs the ball, fires it back in. Blair has to scramble back to first base. He thought that one was out of here. Harper saves it already in the top second inning with one down. Due up the bat will be Jerry Buchik. Barry Chuk is batting 244. Does have a B. His, his slate percentage is twice as almost as average. Here is the pitch to Buchik. Boyer is on first. 13, he is. A wild pitch. Oh, two let one go, and it gets over the head of our catcher. Edwards, he couldn't get there in time. Crossed him up. Edwards won a nice low one at the knees, and O'Toole let it fly. But it slipped out of his hand, and he just did. We're going to get that glove back up there fast enough. Let me get out of there, guys. Thank you. And here we go. The batter coming up. And so, Butchick is on at the, at the plate. O'Toole is on the mound. Ken Boyer is on second base, and the Cardinals are threatening a little bit. First threat of the game, too. Here is the pitch to Buchik. That is a 63. And Buchik hits a fly out of Rutiva coming out in for it. Will be our right, will be the right fielder, Frank Robinson. Boyer says, second look, he be looking to tag. Robinson has to come out and grabs the ball. Boyer thinks better of it as Robinson fires to third on a one hopper, two. Our third baseman, Darren Johnson. Boyer will stay at second base. Two down. We are in the top of the second inning at Crosley Field. Coming to bat will be Johnny. Uh, will be uh, Bob Euchre, the catcher. Here is the pitch. 53, and Euchre is hit. Old Tool hits him. Turn the back, caught it at the small of the back, and Euchre will take first base. Mike Shannon's coming up to bat here. Runs on first and second. They're checking Euchre real quick. Let me make sure that, that doesn't. Hold him off. And the answer is no. He is all right. So Mike Shins cut the bet. Here we go. Don't even do that. Yeah, it's going to leave a mark on there, as they like to say back in the game. Cut the bet is Mike Shins. That's a 31. And he is walked up. Base are loaded. Tracy Stout with two down is coming to bat. I've had this situation happen many, many a times. We have the pitcher all of a sudden show up on a bases loaded situation. So the Cardinals are returning the favorite to the Reds. Bases loaded. Two down. Stallings at the bat. Won't take much. He does have a lot of strikeout counts here, but he has a lot of, of ball hits, so it could happen. And there's a lot of air counts on him. So we can see what's going on on his card. If you guys can see it over here on the left. Whoops. Right, yeah, that's the right one. Over here on the left, you can see it with the airs. E -E 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 -E's. Those are air chances. Quite a few of them on Tracy Stallard. Here we go. That's a 23. I do believe that's a strikeout. No, he hits out towards right field and right at Frank Robinson on the line drive. That is three down. And the Cardinals waste a chance. Top second inning. No runs. One hit. Three runners left on base. At the end of one and a half, we have a scoreless Draw here, do up for the Cincinnati Reds will be Johnny Edwards, Leo Cardinals, and the pitcher Jim O'Toole. Welcome across the field, folks, for all the gang who's showing up. Everybody, hope they're enjoying the great football game over there at, I believe, I'm not sure, are they playing at Foxborough, Al, on that game there, or has he got them over at Sullivan Stadium? So, here we go, first pitch to Johnny Edwards. That is a 43, and John Edwards hits the right straight back at Stout. Stout feels that ball, takes, makes sure he's got a good hold of it, flips it over towards White. We have one down on a ground ball by 
Johnny Edwards due up is Leo Cardenas. Leo Cardenas so far this season is batting 289. Slick percentage of 410. Tracy Stallings on the mound. Ready to go. Here is the pitch. That is a 45. That is a walk. That is, oh, that is Stallings fourth walk of the game. Compared to what you guys see up on the board, they're in the upper left hand corner. Coming to bat will be Jim O'Toole. Jim O'Toole with one down here. Yeah, we're going to give it a try. Let's see if we can get a butt out there going along. Here is the pitch. That is a 35. And no, foul strike. See if we can get him, to get him again. Cecil hasn't fixed this yet, by the way. Eric, what this is, is that's every bat, at bat that's out there, okay? And any anything that happened. Because a foul strike does not involve any play, it question marks. Cyrus hasn't fixed it yet. He's been trying, okay? He's been trying for over a year and a half to get this fixed. It's a real tough call for him to do that because in doing so, he'd have to kill our what the batters are doing, which is a, la, a little bit of action PC. Or Chestnut. Right. Uncle Ron, I thought you were playing. I thought you were broadcasting a game, sir. That's why I, 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 that's why I apologize to you because I, I was stepping into your broadcast. Ron, I left you a question at the beginning of the game. The question is, is on your ball roller, okay, how many, how many seconds do you let it go? That's my question to you, sir. Good question to ask. Let's try to get this a little more current in my thing here. Hold on, guys. That's what I got here. Hold on. Quick break. Time out. Oh, that is me. No, it's not. No, it's not me. Hold on. Okay, guys, I'm going to move into my channel real quick. So hang on. I might be able to get you better than that. Let's get into the studio. So I can look at that just a little bit better. All right. There we go. Okay. I got to get this computer to work right, guys. Um, don't disrespect me. This, my PC is coming with me to England. So, we'll go from there. Okay, here we go. We're going to try another bunt. There's only one strike. See what happens here. All in one count against Jim O'Toole. 61 this time. And Tracy Stout got him to strike out on two strikes as he tried to butt miss the attempt. And still two goes down on Tracy Stout's first strikeout. Back up is Tommy Harper. Tommy Harper so far in his first in the first inning. He grounded out to our shortstop. Dick Grote in the first inning, and he's up here for the second time this game. As Tracy Stout so far is pitching great. Oh, you got a good one going. If you're if, if you're if you're uploading that, I'll let us know, because I'll come back and watch it. All right, sixty-five four, Mister Harper this time, and that is a walk. That is a walk, and Cardenas is up on second base. Harper's on first. The Reds are threatening one more time. That is the fifth walk in of Patricia Stellard. He can live on this butt so long. Due up here is Peter E. Rose. He walked his first time up. Here's the pitch by Stallard. 61. Pass ball. That's what got by the catcher. Bob Euchre. Bob Euchre can get past his. Trying to fumble around with it. Again, finds it in between, in between the umpire's legs. Has to, yeah, that's a bad pun, guy. Sorry. Has to throw it back. But Tarper and Cardinals both advance the base with two down. Peter Rose is up on the bat. I'm going to set this back to where Ron has it. 13, I, that's where I was at. I was as low as 5. I thought it was how many rolls, not roll time. Okay, here we go. And Peter Rose, that's a 35. Thanks, Ron. Always thank you, Ron. And... Tracy Stout gets Peter Rose to swing on a curveball. Very trying curveball for the third strike. Yes, yeah, Stout is having control problems, so he is leading the game. Two up for the St. Louis Cardinals is Lou Brock, Dick Grote, and Phil Gagliano. Lou Brock, his first time up, has struck out. Old tools on the mound. He already is in the tired rating, trying to get him into at least to the fifth inning so he can get, he become the pitcher of record. 
Here is a pitch to Brock. 53, and Brock hits out towards left field, but waiting for it to come on down is Tommy Harper. Makes the grab, and we have one down in the top of third inning. <coughs> We're on a beautiful night at Crosley Field here. June 24th, 1960. I don't have my newspaper thing up yet. My God, I'm losing my flipping mind. Oh, my God. How can I, how can I beat Clinton if I'm not doing it right? All right, let's see what we got here. Da, 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 Ew. Teddy Boggy comes back from the court. Hits a three-run shot. Yes, it, or two-run blast. It is 7-2 Boston in 1946. Okay, Cincinnati Inquirer. There we go. Okay. Oh, hoo, hoo. All right. I'm already signed in. Come on, give me in. No, hold on. I gotta sign in. There we go. Get out of there. Thank you. All right. Da -da. All right. There we go. Here I am. Gotta get my toys back in, guys. I know I'm good. I gotta remember to pay for this too. Get out of there. Get 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 out of there. Thank you. Okay. Yes, I am. No kidding. All right. Good. Okay. Let's get let's get to the homepage. Right. Sorry, guys. This is that Inquirer. Okay. 1965. June. June. Sorry for the delay, gang. Like I said, I'm out of practice a little bit. There we go. Okay. Weather. All right. I know I'd had it in there. Okay, since the inquiry. Oh, okay, yeah, I misspelled it. That's why you prick. Sorry, guys. I'm a little slow. I'm getting old. All right, so, anyway. Yeah, a pitching cage in the gate. Thing in the Bronx. Oh, my God. Al, you got a good one going there, boss. Okay. Thank you for the re thank you for the updates while I'm doing this. I do apologize. You know me by now, crazy as I am. Okay, what we need now? Good, 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 good. Okay, weather. Like I said, it is June 24th, June 24th, 1965. We're looking for the weather here at Cincinnati. And there we go. They got page 38. What kind of, oh, yes, at the old River Downs chart, the weather for today will be a little bit cloudy. Track was fast. Pretty good day to go. Okay. Good day to go to the, go to, go to the thing. Now, the weather thing in the weather channel. Oh, excuse me. All right. report. There we go. And the weather for Cincinnati for the 24th of June, guys, as we go into here. It will be... Uh, the weather forecast site since I trust. Oh, yeah, I re recorded 83 that day. I remember that. I remember seeing that one there in, in May, in June. All right. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Okay. Forecast. There we go. Okay. I knew I'd get it right. I'm out of practice. But again, it is, a, it is the 24th of June. Come on. There we go. There we go. There we go. And the weather for today for Cincinnati was chance of future early showers, lows in the mid 60s, skies would be climbing in today's this afternoon. And the game right now is in the 60s. And here you go, guys. Yes, you too can become a beautician. Day of the evening classes will be starting July 6th. 
An invitation to the public cost is $395, $5 per week at the Highwood School of Hair Designing at 615 Main Street, Cincinnati, Ohio. Uncle Ron, we found you a job. Okay, back to the ball game. <laughs> I have found I have found my advertisements. There we go. Okay, do up is Dick Groat. Dick Groat here in the middle of the third inning. I did this in the middle of the inning, so we got a, we got one of those old 1960 TV commercials that shows up where they don't belong. Dick Groat is what he ground out to the third baseman, Darren Johnson. Here is the pitch to Groat. Fifty six. And Pies Gillespie guy may have gotten a piece of that ball. Let's see what happens here. And he hits a high pop-up. It's getting back there in towards the outfield. Johnson and Cardinals are getting ready to try to meet it. And Cardinals throw, blows him off. Gets back there. Ball blows just enough. He has to stretch the glove on. Falls on his back with the ball in the hand. Makes the grab. We have two down on a sensational pop up that should have been routine, and the wind got a hold of it over here at Crosley Field. Coming to bat will be Phil Gagliano. Phil Gagliano flew out to left field first time up. O'Toole's ready. Here is the pitch. That is a 56. And he also has a routine pop up this time up and down right straight at Cardis. And we have another 1 2 3 inning for the Cincinnati Reds. At the end of two and a half, it is St. Louis nothing, the Cincinnati Reds nothing. Coming to bat for the Reds will be Veda Pinson, Frank Robinson, and Gordy Coleman. Veda Pinson last time flew out to our center fielder. He is on a current five-game hit streak, and he has hit, been involved in one of the longest hit streaks of the season when he was involved in a 20-gamer. Here is the pitch. 61. And he is walked. That is Stallard's sixth walk of the game. He is definitely having control problems today. He is getting him up, but is that cost? Is the Cincinnati Reds eventually going to snap out of this? Do up is Frank Robinson. Frank Robinson, the first time up, walked. Here is the pitch. 46. And Stallard gets him striking out, swinging on a ball right there at the knees. And Robinson is up. Pinson is there at first base, goes back. Gordy Coleman is up. So far, he has also walked. Here is the pitch. 66. Gordy Coleman hits it up. And it is, is it high enough? It is deep enough. It's heading over that left field wall. And he gets it. Cincinnati breaks the, the, that no-hitter. They saw it coming. Stallard finally had to start throwing it down the middle of the plate. Gordy Coleman gets the first hit of the game for Cincinnati, and very ironically, it is jacked. Out to the left field side, heading towards where the clock used to be at, at Grozzy Field. So the Cincinnati Reds open up with a 2-0 lead with one down here. Coming to bat will be Darren Johnson. Darren Johnson flew out to left field last time. Here is the pitch. That's a 15. Johnson gets out there. Grounds out heading over town towards our shortstop. Grok Gross will step over towards his left. Left plants his feet. Fires the first. Two down. Due up will be Johnny Edwards. Johnny Edwards last time ground out to the pitcher. Stallard. Here is the pitch. 13. And he is walked out of Stallard's seventh walk of the game. Stallard is, is definite. Got definitely got control problems. You know that <coughs> our manager is looking at it. And I know it's not Johnny Keene either because he's with the Yankees right now. Here is the pitch. I think it's Red Shane Deeds. 65. And Cardinals is walked. That is Stallard's. Eighth walk of the game. He gets up to 10. We're going to have to yank him. I can't let this keep going. Jim O'Toole is out there. Jim O'Toole so far has struck out. Here is the pitch. 53. And he has hit it toward, over there. Great to Boyer. Boyer has to fire over towards his left. Couldn't get to his bag of time. Realized that. Fires to first base and makes the play. At the end of... Three innings. It is the Cincinnati Reds two, the St. Louis Cardinals nothing, and we've got the Cincinnati Reds here. Let's see what other trouble we can cause today. 
Oh, this is good. Oh, this is good. Okay, I can have fun with this one here. Yes, we can. Hey, complete single vision or bifocal glasses for all of us old guys. The grand opening of a complete optical service. No appointment necessary <coughs> at the Terrace Hilton, 25 West 6th Street, downtown in Cincinnati. Phone number is, I can't tell you that because that would get me in trouble with the YouTube gods. But you can get complete prescription glasses for men, women, and children for $10.95 at the optical company. And prescription sunglasses half off during our grand opening. You can also get, watch your glasses get made and, and get same day service plan. We're open Monday through Thursday till 8.30 and open on Friday and open on Friday and Saturday 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Get your glasses for all of you old guys who need them like me. Back to our ball game we are going to be in. And I'm doing the Cincinnati Inquirer only today. I should get the St. Louis Post-Dispatch and really have a ball with you guys. God, I miss doing this. Thank you very much. Eric, if Eric of Higher Ground Gaming is in here, thank you very much for getting me back to doing this. I'm a little slow today. I apologize. Then again, I'm slow every day. It's called old age. Get over it, Clint. Do up is Ken Boyer, Bill White, and Jerry Buchik here in the bottom top of the fourth inning on a 2 0 Cincinnati lead. Jim O'Toole is still on the mound, throwing three innings so far. Face 12 batters, has one walk, one strikeout. Here is the pitch to Ken Boyer, who had a singles first time up. Got the only, he's got the only hit for the St. Louis Cardinals. 61. And he hits, he slaps himself on the ground ball, and he got that way towards our shortstop. <coughs> Cardinals, Cardinals able to grab that ball, fired up, and makes the grab to get Boyer out by a couple of steps. One down in the top fourth inning, coming up to bat will be Bill White. Bill White's last time up did fly out to the throwing. Bill White flew out to our left fielder. Terry Harper in the first, in the, not the first inning. So I think I don't have it here, guys. He did it in the second. Uh, that's the only thing I don't have, and I'm not going to worry about it. That's um, At least we got this. It's a nice little minor detail, uh, Eric. Eric, the last, a lot of my tricks are at the end of the game. I can show you a few things. You can actually you can broadcast them out, or you can actually post them. Bill White, that's a 15 to Bill White. I do believe that is it. Yes, Bill White hits that in towards left center field, trying to come on in to get that ball is Veda Pinson. Veda Pinson can't get in time, drops in front of him for the base hit. Bill White will take first base. We are here in the top of the fourth inning at Crosley Field, Cincinnati. On a 2 0 Reds lead, based on a home run by Darren John, or Gordy Coleman. Here we go. Coming to bat will be Jerry Buchik, one down. I wonder if he can bunt. We're going to try that, guys. See if he can bunt him over. See if we get some runs going on here. 32. And Jerry Bunt lays a beauty of a bunt down. Heading down, he lays a great drag bunt down the first baseline. Having to come on in is Gordy Coleman. Going over to over to make the play is Rose. Gordy falls over towards Rose. White will take second base. Buchik will get the credit for the sacrifice hit. And we have two down. White is on second base. Coming to bat is Bob Euchre. Last time Bob Euchre was up, he took a hit. Oh, I got somebody over here. There we go. There we go. Okay. And here we go. Bob Euchre is ready. White's on second base. Old tools ready. Here is the pitch. 53 to Euchre, and Euchre has hit the second time this game. Don't know what O'Toole's got against him, but that's the second time, and Euchre, this one here actually, by the umpire standards, just barely brushed his uniform. Euchre might be trying to crowd the plate up there. O'Toole's letting him know, that's my side of the plate. Get away. So that's the second time Euchre's been hit this game. This could get interesting today. Not much chirping, but Euchre's wondering what's going on and what, what he has done to his solo tool, but this is Bob Euchre. Coming up is Mike Sheena. Mike Sheena walks his last time up. We have two down. This old tool's only walk. White's on second. Euchre's on first. Here is the pitch. 14. And Shannon hits it out. Heading out that way. Wind's picking up a little bit. Harper has to be going back and makes the one-handed grab towards the line. Three down. The Reds are out of it again. No runs. One hit. Two runners left on base. 
And at the, as they're walking out the way, O'Toole is getting warned. By our umpire that if he hits another batter, he is done. And I have to make a note of that somewhere because I said that. Yeah, it's getting more than a little bit chippy. I find no Bob Euchre. He's not using exactly chippy language. So, he might be using a few words and talking about O'Toole's mother. Okay. Tommy Harper's coming to bat. He has, so far he's grounded out and he has walked. Stout's back on the mound. He has eight walks this game. Here is the pitch to Harper. He were in the bottom of the fourth inning at Cincinnati. 52, and Harper hits out. Harper shot on a one. Harper boys able to snare that ball up. Takes a quick breath. Fires the first. He does the speed of Harper, and he beats out Harper barely by a half step. There is no done on the play. They're looking for the instant replay, but they forgot that. Wasn't interesting. That wasn't invented for 40 years. So we have one down here on a bang bang play at first. By our. That was called by our first base umpire. Bill Williams over there. Be surprised I got to come up with on this stuff. All right. Coming up is Pete Rose. Pete Rose has walked and he has struck out. Here is the pitch to Rose. 16. And Pete Rose hits it hard, but right straight at our shortstop. Groat. Groat's able to grab it real easily. Fired over towards first. And Stallings gave him to hit him where they ain't, where they are. Doing well this, this, this inning for a change. And Stallings is ready to go. Coming to bat is Veda Pinson. Veda Pinson they flew out the center, and he's one of Stella's eight walks. Here's the pitch to Veda Pinson. 31. And Veda Pinson gets out there and gets the second hit over the short base, over our shortstop's head. Rick gets out there just over his glove. Drops on and coming in to grab it is Lou Brock. Flips it into second base. Veda Pinson will stay at first. Here with two down in the bottom of the fourth inning. Two up is Frank Robinson. Frank Robinson's walking struck out. Very on Frank Robinson Gaines, who is at this 340 average. Here is the pitch. 52. And Robinson hits it out towards our third baseman, who very wisely flips it over towards second base for the force play. And that is three down. No disrespect again, Al. That's not a play you're going to see a lot of. <coughs> Matter of fact, you're very lucky if you see it at all. Oh! You're going to... STM, there is no swearing a lot on my channel. And you're swearing. You're using a two-letter using a two-letter abbreviation that is a swear word on the Cardiac League's channel. Shame on you. We are in the top of the fifth inning here of a great game at Crosley Field. Cincinnati Reds leading 2-0 on the home run by Gordy Coleman. Coming to bat for the St. Louis Cardinals in the top of the fifth is Tracy Stelter, who's still managing his B rate, but got to finish dropping down to C. He's going to be going to a C rating when he gets back in. Lou Brock and Dick Grote. Tracy Stelter's last time up is able to get a good hook on the ball, flips and gets out there towards Robinson for the with a decent fly ball. He did get a piece of it. He is currently batting 160. Yes, pitchers hit in this league. Okay, and they can hit. Yeah. God, you're lucky I'm not dressed for this game. I'm wearing, I am wearing my, you'll shoot your eye out jammies. Don't mess with me. Okay, here we go. 15. And Tracy still takes one looking. Didn't even get the bat off his shoulder. Right down the pipe where it belongs. And that is one down. That is O'Toole's second strike out of the game. He's with a 5-2 and two record. And as I stated at the very beginning of the game, actually he only had a 3 and 10 record for Cincinnati, so I'm already doing better. That's why I like simulation. We do keep the players in. If I can move them around, I will, but I won't. Not as long as Cincinnati's playing well. And the only place that they really did a lot of changing in this game here was at the pitcher's mound. And maybe Gordy Coleman after his third at bat. Pavletic come in, so I have to remember to bring him in after Coleman's third at bat. The Cardinals side of the house, I got to do the same thing, and I can do it now, but I got to move some players around to do it. So at the bottom of the fifth inning, give me a chance. I'm going to, I'm going to be moving players, and I got to replace a couple. And we'll work on that too. Okay. So that's so to let you guys know. We got to, we're going to have some fixes. Oh, what are we retracting? Be nice, Mike. Yeah, be nice. 
It's okay, though. This is me. I'm 63 years old. You can insult me. It's all right. I will get back at you. Have no fear. Ask Al. If not Al, ask Beatles. Here we go. Coming fast, Lou Brock. He has struck out, and he has got a single. He struck, no, he struck out and flown out, and this is a 41. And he hits out towards, towards shorts. That, that stretch on over that way, grabbing that ball quickly is Cardinals. Cardinals scoops it up out there on his right-hand side. He's right out towards the thing, grabs it up, fires over towards first base, and we have two down. My channel is always fun. Mike, look at a lot of the old games. You'll see what's going on. This is called the Cardiac League for a huge reason. And this is my first broadcast in two months. I have I took a real long break. Eric of Higher Ground Gaming, as I, I think I've stated before, asked me if I would... If I talked to him because he's just getting started in MP3. He bought the game. No, uh, is this game in color? Way to go, Dave! Yes, this is in living color on NBC. Okay. God. <laughs> okay, but Eric from High Ground Gravy, I told him I'd do this because I showed that I've tried to show him and they won't let me do it on this thing. I don't know why, but there's a there's a pop up and I gotta remember how to get the pop ups to work on, on, on OBS. If anybody can remember how to get the pop ups to work, let me know. Cause I really would like to do that. Um I really would. Just so everybody knows, if I can remember how to do it, let me know. Because I thought I could, I thought I was able to bring the pop-ups in here. Let me bring Gordy's real quick, because he's got a game going right now. Let's see what I can do. Hang on, you may go black. Alright. Sorry about that. Like I said, give me a sec here. No, oh, okay. Oh, that's my camera. All right. I'll have to fix that. All right. Sorry, guys. Went black on purpose. So I do apologize. I was trying something and it didn't work. Uh, this is OBS. And only because right now I'm still on a little bit on the cheap side, guys. That's all. Got the game back up. There we go. All right. I'll look at it. I thought there was a way I could do that. And if not, I'll ask Jester. Jester, Jester or one of, the other, one of my other... Killers would know. Always asking questions about the game. Okay, here we go. Dick Grote. Dick Grote so far, last time up, he has grounded to third base over there at uh, Johnson, and he has popped out to our shortstop. Here is the pitch to Grote. That is a 62, and he gets a base hit this time out there over the left field. Gun the ground gets it between Boyer and Carter. Neither one is ready between them. Drops on in, and we have a runner on first base with two down. Cardinals third hit of the game here. Two up is Phil Gagliano. Phil Gagliano last time up. He popped out also to the shortstop, and he also flown out to left field. Here is the pitch. 36. And he hits a high pop-up major league style. We're all waiting for it to come on down. And that comes on down right there at behind the bag at third base. Darren Johnson makes the play, and we have three down. At the end of four and a half innings, it is the St. Louis Cardinals non-Red Sox 2. As we always say, it is a, oh, you guys are real cute. Oh, God, no, 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 guys. All right, that's it. That is it. All right, guys, no, no, no. This one's coming at you. So there! Just for you guys. Yeah. I can date myself. If you'd like me to I can put in black and white in basic programming. Guys, smart butts. <laughs> All right, we are in the bottom of the fifth inning here at Cincinnati Crosley Field. Let's see what we can come up with, guys. You never know from, Clint, from Clint's mouth. You know this paper was 121 pages? Holy crap. I could find all sorts of things. Ooh, new fiber shop at home at McElpins for new fiberglass beta custom-made draperies. 
The softness and the texture of fine velvet and fiberglass brightens colors to complement any decor. There are over 30 gorgeous fiberglass fabrics to choose from. Only $2.99 to $7.99 a yard. That is including the labor. You can shop at home, make an appointment with our consultant in your home for your convenience. He will measure and estimate correctly with no obligation to you. Also at Macaplins, we have a solid oak port swing, a five-footer for $10.95. Do it yourself. And a two-seater solid oak line lawn swing at $29.95. All at Macaplins in Cincinnati. And let's see if I can get this. Yes, we can. Shop Thursdays downtown from 9.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. It's also located in Western Hills, Cherry Grove, and at the Kenwood Plaza. And remember, though, for delivery here, you've got to, for in Ohio and Kentucky, you've got to remember to add the 3% sales tax. We are in the bottom of the fifth inning. <laughs> Ah, you guys remembered. Oh, I love you all. Coming to bat is Gordy Coleman. Gordy walked his first time up and hit that two-run shot in third. We are in the bottom of the fifth inning. Stallard is still on the mound. We're going for, he's got, he has eight walks, three strikeouts. He is currently the pitcher of record, but we got to make sure if the Cardinals win, at least get a chance if they do anything in the sixth. And Coleman, it is a 32. And Phil Gag now hits, gets him to hit it. He goes swung late. Lines it out over towards Bucci. Bucci's able to get that ball just on the just right by the back. Fires to first, and Coleman is gone. And here in the bottom of the fifth inning, in a beautiful 2 0 game at Crosby Field, Cincinnati, Ohio. Ah. At the same time, as you can see in the distance there, just they are just starting to open the ground up for this brand new stadium. They're talking about naming it River Riverfront. Possibility though, it could even be us. They're all in the same. This the same person. These have designed all the stadiums that are coming out now. It looks like they're coming out, and we're going to give them a new name: Cookie Cutters. Okay. Darren Johnson so far has flown out to left ground to our shortstop. He's managed to keep it over. He looks like he's playing like a dead pull hitter today. Just for information, he does have a six-game hitting streak sometime during the season. So he's not doing that well, that badly. Here's, and eventually, I believe he, uh, Alex, th isn't this the same Darren Johnson who became the Red Sox manager for a few years? Oh, God. Here we go. It is a 24 to Johnson. And Tracy Stallard is able to keep that on the inside part of the plate. It stays on the white. Struck him out. We have two down. That is Stallard's fourth strikeout of the game. Due up here is Johnny Edwards. Johnny Edwards flew uh, last time up. He walked. He also ground out to the pitcher. Here is the throw by Stallard. It is a 12. Edwards sees if have gotten a piece of the ball. And this is out towards second, making the diving. Diving stop on the ground is Buchik sits and stays on his butt, fires over towards first, gets in there on the bounce, barely, but White Smales is holding up, and <laughs> Edwards is gone. Four to three play. Okay, thanks, Arj th thanks. Didn't know, to be honest with you, I remember, by, I, I keep, I, those are two days I do, do swing, swing and mix. We're going into the top of the sixth inning here at Cincinnati. Coming to bat for the St. Louis Cardinals is Ken Boyer, Bill White, and the man who just made that fantastic play for the Reds, Jerry Buchik. And here we go, guys, just for all you guys here in the Cincinnati area or over there on Eastwood Drive. Swim this summer for free at the Stratford Manor. Enjoy a beautiful one-bedroom one bedroom apartment. Net rent starts at $59 a month. And a convenient way to live. Walking distance to the schools. Newly decorated shopping center. City buses. Established adult sections for all you guys. And they have a pool player and nursery schools. Very good. Okay. We'll bring it back. All right. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to back up here, guys, real quick. Okay. And baseball. Nope. Went too far. Okay. All right. 
Okay. Lost my thing, so hurry, hang on, guys. Lost my newspaper. Don't you dare do that to me. There we go. All right. And there we go. Okay. All right, for any of you guys, guys who enjoy watching watching Semi Pro, the Home Federal Ball Club lost E.L. Moore 5 4. Baddies were Harper and Brenner. Gelson came in. And, this, and had Gelson and Whittakin and Beckley and Lupe came in the sixth inning for the catch. Latonia beat the Eagles SNL, safe season alone, 4 to 1. There we go. And I've got my next commercial for you guys. We're going to have a good time with this game. I'm going to enjoy this. Yes! There you go! <laughs> we are in the top of the sixth inning. Here is the pitch. I do this a lot, by the way, uh, Mike. 22 to Ken Boyer. And Ken Boyer reaches out towards the right field, gets over the head of Coleman as he, was, as he starts slowly heading towards the line. Coleman's not the best fielding first baseman out there this year. And gets past him, and Boyer's on first base. Frank Robinson will scarf it up, and there, Boyer takes a nice, nice deep lead, but gets back there knowing about Robinson's arm here at Cincinnati. Due up is Bill White. Bill White, so far, he's got a base hit. He's flowing out. His average is up 256. Here is the pitch. Excuse me. 16. And Bill White hits it over towards short. Ruth looks like it says it could be a routine for Carter. Carter slips over to second, over towards first, double play, 6 4 3, and we have two down in the top sixth inning. Routine double play, if you ever want to call it double play routine. Coming up is Jerry Buchik. Jerry Buchik has flown out to right and hit a sacrifice, got a sacrifice hit. He's up, old tool's ready to go. Old tool's just firing away. He's on all cylinders. Here is the pitch 35. And he strikes out Buchik. Three down. It could have been a start. It ends up being a 1-2-3 inning for the Cincinnati Reds. But it was no runs. One hit. Nobody left on base. At the end of five and a half. It's Cincinnati. Two runs. Two hits. St. Louis Cardinals. No runs. Four hits. We got a clean game running. Very enjoyable. Stallis back on the mound. He can still play. Like I said, when he reaches 10 walks, though, I'm going to yank him. Cardinals is up to bat so far. He has been walked twice. Here is the pitch. By Stallard, he's ready to go. He's thrown a lot of pitches. How many? We don't know. There's no such thing as a pitch count. 64. And Cardinals is waiting for it this time. But Stallard fooled him. Got him on the outside. Hits the paints. The black corner. Gets him out. The umpire gets that arm up. Stand as they strike out four. Stallard is fifth of the game. Got to look like one of Sam McDowell's games. Jim O'Toole is up to bat so far. He has struck out. That question mark is something happened that was not involved in that bat. And he's grounded out to Ken Boyer. Here is the pitch by Stallard. 46. And he is right straight down. A little tapper over towards Stallard. Stallard was able to get that ball up. It was waiting just on a couple of hops. Flips it over towards first base as O'Toole doesn't run fast. Easy play. Two down. Everybody's taking a quick breather for the Cardinals right now. And they're breathing quick. Coming back because Tommy Harper's good bet, who is always a threat, though he's only hitting 247 this season. So far, he's grounded out twice, and he has walked. Here is the pitch. 16. And Harper hits it right over towards short. Short says, grab. Throw flips over towards left. Grabs a couple steps. Takes that ball up on the fly. On the run. Fires towards first. Accurate throw. Very nicely done on the run. By Grote, great play, and he gets him out. Harper, I, a step they had to hurry on that one. At the end of six full, it is to Cincinnati Reds, two St. Louis Cardinals, nothing. <laughs> Coming to bat for the St. Louis Cardinals will be Bob Euchre, Mike Shannon, Tracy Stallard. All right, wise guys, here's something for all of you guys, okay? At the Biltmore Tire. On 3101 Reading Road here in North, they are square one square north of Sears at the corner of Mellish. 
over here in Woodlawn. And you can get your tires, mufflers installed for only $7.95 for most cars. And you can get recaps for all 13, 14, and 15 inch tires. $5.95 at this low price. That's right, you can, you too can get recaps. Okay, and at the first round of the Old South, the St. Paul Open, Dick Meyer leads. Dick Meyer and Lionel Herbert are tied up at the 64. Tommy Jacobs is at a 65, along with Tom Weisskopf, Joe Campbell, and this fellow named Palmer is two strokes back at 66. Okay, and for one of our rare games, I think I, I didn't I didn't broadcast this, but pretty much with the same. Kansas City A6, the New York Yankees 2, doubles by Causey, Kapneris, and Lenz. Clark Carrollson hit his seventh. Joe Pepitone hit his eighth. So we've got some great games going here on an 84-page newspaper that I like. This is the Friday. By the way, I flipped to the Friday paper just so you guys know. All right. There we go. We'll do that. There we go. Okay. I like. This is the Cincinnati Inquirer, guys, by the way, okay? And I love the old newspapers. Oh, I wish I could, I wish I could post this one. I think you guys would like it. Um, for anybody who gets newspapers.com, Darren Johnson actually had to jump up pretty good high to avoid a slide by of all people, Bob Uecker. We are in top seventh inning. Pete Rose is up the bat. <laughs> hey, I had a 59. Rambler Classic, black and silver. Oh, with the fins, too. Here we go. Bob Euchre, 22. And Jim O'Toole has no choice. He had to throw it to him that way. He has been warned. Bob Euchre gets a good pull of that bat. Hits out over, over the second base. In towards left field. Left center field where Pitson has to come grab it. And he is on the base hit. Coming to bat is Mike Shannon. Mike Shannon so far is batting. He is over. He's walking to fly out. Let's see if we can get Euchre towards third base. We're going to see if we can pull off something here, guys. Here we go. Let's see if we can stop the shutout at least. Shannon will be trying to bunt at least one time. At the 16, and Shannon hits it out towards first. Straight line bunt towards first, and Pete Rose has to get over there towards, towards first base. Actually, the pitcher got this. Jim O'Toole is in between pitcher and first. Jim O'Toole gets it first coming in, and he will flip over towards second. Bob Buecher will take second base on the sacrifice. They couldn't get over there quick enough, and we have runner on second base. So the sacrifice worked by Mike Shannon on a 1-4. to four. Old tools on the mound. Euchre's at second base. Coming to bat will be Tracy Stallard. We're in the top of the seventh inning on a 2 nothing game here. And I'm looking for opinions, guys. Should I take him out for a pinch hitter? I will accept all opinions for the next three minutes while I go make a cup of coffee. He was relieved in the eighth inning. Just so you know, for real in the game. So I do have that option. And I could bring in a pinch hitter, which would actually work quite well for me. I will take an opinion, guys, and I'm going to grab me a cup of coffee real fast. I am looking for an opinion on should I yank Tracy Stallard out in the seventh inning for a pinch hitter. By the way, the pinch hitter will be Bob Skinner. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, give me a sec, guys. All right, all right. Casey, how are you doing? Welcome to the madhouse again. And as you can tell, 
Card the Cardiac League is up and running. We are going to go with the information here. So, and I'm going to take, because I trust my partners in crime, Bob Skinner will be the batter. Coming in so far this season. He is batting 265. He has one home run, nine RBIs. Let's take a look at my rest of his record in the last 10 games batting here. I do have that little chart. Anybody who plays National Pastime 3. Over on the right-hand side where the lineups are, if you right-click uh, you right -click on your mouse, it'll come up saying... Uh, It'll come up saying three little things, which are actually pretty cool. Display card, display last 10 games batting, display last eight games pitching. And obviously, if you know who's doing what, you know what's going on. Okay, for the last 10 games for Bob Skinner, he's batting 214. He has one RBI for the entire month of June. So he's been used, used very sparingly. He does have a 385 average as a pinch hitter, though. So far, he has uh, 13 hits, two triples, no doubles. Believe that one? Walked three times, struck out nine. Interesting way to go. O'Toole's on the mound. He is still in the D rating. He is hanging in there. He's throwing a shutout. And, Eric, if you're listening to this game, I will not pull him, even though he's a D rated pitcher right now, because of the fact he is yet to give up a run. Okay, I believe that if I can, my pitcher should get, unless. It's a real dire situation uh, on a shutout. And I have pulled pitchers on shutouts, okay? Uh, and it gets up towards the 8th and ninth inning. And I forgot, then I will go with the tired rule. But otherwise, no. Here is the pitch. 13, I do believe that could be a walk. And it is. They have walked Skinner. Runners around first and second. O'Toole is starting to get tired. That is his second walk of the game. Coming to bat is Lou Brock. So far, he has collared. Lou Brock is over with an 0-3. Struck out, flown out, and he has grounded out. All two is on the mound. Runners on first and second. Here we go. It is a 36. And the infield fly rule is in effect. As a, pop, as a short pop out to the shortstop. Comes on in, and the Cardinals is able to get that ball. Euchre and Skinner will not try to advance. We have two out here in the top seventh inning. Something else you won't see out is the infield fly roll. So, no, and again, out. No disrespect. It's not. It's not you. It's them. Okay. So have no fear. All right. Coming to bat is Dick Groat. Dick Groat so far today is one for three. He has a. He has ground out. He has uh, popped out and he got a base hit his last time up the bat here in the fifth inning. Runs on first and second. Cardinals are sort of semi-threatening. Here is the pitch. 44. And here we go. And Bill Groat is able to get that hit on the second time. Coming around the corner to score is Bob Euchre. Skinner heads over towards third. Groat will stay at second. And we have a 2 1 ball game. And as I promised, we are not going to replace Jim O'Toole. The next pitcher up that the Cincinnati Reds threw out there in that game, it will be the next pitcher. And it is. And you guys know him from being one of the worst pitchers ever in Met history, Roger Craig, and one of the best managers for San Francisco in recent times. Roger Craig will be the new pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. Bring him in while he's warming up. Let's get the let's get the lowdown on Roger Craig. Roger Craig so far this season's been in 18 games. He has five saves, involved 25 in the third innings. Has 14 strikeouts, 10 walks. Has given up one home run. Has an ERA of 1.42. Whip of .095. And batters of batting 175 against him. For someone who's such a lousy starter for the Mets, he's an excellent reliever for the Cincinnati Reds this year in our league. In his last 10 games, he actually has won two of them in relief. He beat the Cubs on the 18th of June, and he beat the Cardinals on the 9th of June. Where he pitched, to, where he pitched, are you ready for this? For all of you nice guys, 2.1 innings. He actually threw over two innings in a game as a reliever. Amazing. 
We can't get pitchers today to throw a third of an inning. Okay, so yes, I am snarky when it comes to the, the when it comes to the girly manly league. I'm not gonna lie. My passes light right up to about 2012. <laughs> so that's what Roger Craig has done. So here we go. He does carry a little C rating. Runners on first, third. Infield is at normal. Coming to bat will be. Phil Gagliano, Phil Gagliano so far has flaunt the left, pop the short, pop the, the pop the third. Here is a he's gonna get that ball right. He might do something. Here is the pitch. 24. And Craig comes in, strikes him out. That is three down. And Craig holds him off, but the Cardinals get one run across. On. Two hits, there was a walk, two runs left on base. At the end of six and a half innings, it is Cincinnati 2. The St. Louis Cardinals 1 coming in the pitch for the St. Louis Cardinals. Right off the bat will be Don Dennis. We'll get the news on him. Double click always, by the way, just go on in. Grab the pitcher, double click on him too, by the way. And change the pitcher. Don Dennis for the real record was a 229 pitcher. Did not throw once, did not start one game. He's got a decent rate on him. He's good for five batters at the B rating, just so you know. So far my season, this is only his second start. He's a, re he's a, he's a recent call-up. And they used him quite a bit, according to my according to my thing. He's a recent call-up. He's been in two games, has thrown three innings. Doesn't have an ERA of nine, so he's not doing well so far this season. That's given up a long ball. Has a whip of 1.67. It can only come down. Keep in mind, he's a full, he's, he's, he's a true reliever. And as I stated before, this is only his second time at his second time on the mound. He threw in 41 games for the Cardinals. More of a middle reliever than anything else. So he did get six saves, finished 13 games, and he was actually I'm doing him right on time. His first game for the Cardinals was the 18th, for real, for the St. Louis Cardinals. And they played well enough that I didn't need relievers in the other games, so I don't use them. But his first game, so I'm right on time with him. That's how I play the game. If anybody, everybody who knows me, I try to keep it as pure as I can. Now, for the other side of the coin here, I got to, man, I'm not going to move because I just used it. I just screwed up. So, but we'll get out there. We'll, we'll fix that later on. Pete Rose is up to bat. Splitter. Pete Rose is up to bat. So far today, his walk struck out and grounded out to the shortstop. Don Dennis is on the mound. He right now, like I said, he has an ERA of nine. Still getting used to it. New kid on the block. Here is the pitch to Rose. And it is a 62. And Rose has got a piece of that ball. Let's see what happens here. And he hits it towards first base. And has all of a sudden on the ground, takes a stab at it. Is our first base, Bill White, gets over there, throws himself to first base, hits the bag with the glove. We have one down. Rose is out here in the in, in the bottom of the seventh inning here. I hope everybody, while they're waiting, saying take me out to the ball game. If not, I ain't playing it today. Sorry about that, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm being silly and foolish once again. I'm being Clint. Thank you, everybody who's watching my ball game. Do up here, and I'm sorry for the length of time, too, guys. Like I said, this is more of an, also a teaching thing for Eric. Do up is Veda Pence, and Veda Pence, so far, has flown out. He has walked. He's got a base hit. And he has scored a run. Here is the pitch. 23. And Veda Pence hits it out towards our second base. Busek is able to grab that ball easily. Just placed over towards White. Pence is out, down. Four game, out of 4-3 play. That is two down here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Two up is Frank Robinson. Frank Robinson today sort of got the horse call, though he did walk in the first in the uh, second inning. He has struck out and he has grounded out on a force on, on a fielder's choice to uh, Boyer. Robinson ready. Nobody out there. Here is the pitch by Dennis. Forty-six and Robinson is struck out. Dennis gets the K on Robinson. That is three down, a one, two, three inning for reliever Don Dennis, so that helps him out. Gets his confidence. We're going to get his confidence back up here in a very tight ball game. They're willing to, they're, they are willing to get him out there on a tight one here, see what he can do. God, you've got a game going. 
Well, hello, Demos. Good to see you, my friend. Nice to have you here to enjoy the ball game. I will pick that up once it, once it uploads. Was I the pitcher? Was it me versus Ron again? Because I always like those ones. But uh, good to see you also, Demos. Yes, I'm back broadcasting one more time. I'd like to thank everybody who's showing up today before in, in advance. I am hoping that Cyrus has popped in to watch this again. And Eric in the background is watching. And even Beatles. Because, God, I sure miss Beatles. For all the arguments I'm having with, I have with Beatles and Cleese, they've been kind of real starky with each other. We do, I hope I, you know, I apologize for being starky and hope he does the same thing. But, um, I sure miss Beatles. Beatles and I are partners in crime, but by, by the long distance route. So I said, I've got questions for Beatles concerning the United Kingdom. I need help. <laughs> All right, we are in the top of the eighth inning on a very tight 2-1 ball game here. I almost forgot. Don't think I did, though, guys. All right, let's see what I got here. You never know. Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Let me shrink this down so I can see a little bit better. Oh, yeah, okay, just for sports news, guys, just for you guys. Okay, <coughs> co-owner Lou Perry announced an agreement that the New York, the Boston Celtics was sold to the Rupert Knickerbocker Brewing Company of New York. Brett Arbach will be the executive vice president and still the coach. Perry said he and Mrs. Walter Brown, the widow of the founders, decided to sign the paper. So they they sold in the area of $3 million. We could have bought the Boston Celtics for $3 million, guys. All we had to do was pull our money together. But they have been sold. All right. And for only $47.85, you could take the thrifty jet tourist. From Cincinnati to New Orleans, they leave three times a day. You buy a Delta Airlines at forty-seven eighty-five for the mild price. And again, as I said before, they call for sunny and mild here in Cincinnati, eighty-four degrees. On and it was at seven p.m. last night, seventy-six on the twenty-fourth Cincinnati. So it's a little bit on the muggy side. No precipitation. I was right. It was a beautiful day at to go to the ballpark. Coming to bat is Ken Boyer, Bill White, and Jerry Butcher. Ken Boyer last time got a base hit. He's two for three today. He's probably the only Cardinal hitter that has hit double games. Here we go. And it's a 65, and it is a base hit. Carl Boyer goes three for four. That one gets out towards left field, drops on in, and we have a runner first base here in the eighth inning. St. Louis is trying to get back here at the bound the back half of the games. This happens much. Welcome to the Cardiac League. Heart attack seasons. Come on in, kiddies. Welcome back. Here we go. All right. Coming to bat will be Bill White. Boyer's on first. Bill White is not a bunter. I can almost tell you that. Like I said, I cannot talk to Cyrus, but figured out who I know where the butt ratings are on here. Here is the pitch. 44. And Bill White gets a base hit. Flips out there towards right center field on the shot on the short hop. Easy over towards Robinson. He's able to grab that ball quickly. Boyer will have to stop at second base. Runners are on first and second. Craig is on the mound. He is in trouble with two runners on already here in the top of the eighth inning. St. Louis is threatening. Jerry Buchik himself is coming up to bat. He has fallen out to right field. Sacrifice base, uh, sacrifice hit. And he has struck out. Here is Here we go. Breakers in the stretch. Boyer's on second base. Bill White's on first. Jerry Buchik is up to bat. Here is the pitch. It is a 55. And Jerry Buchik gets one out there towards short baseman. Hit Boyer's on his way heading out towards home fleet. Here comes the throw to the plate. And Boyer is safe. Bill White will hold a second base. We have a 2-2 tie. Oh, yeah. And it's a 2-2 tie for the Cincinnati, for the St. Louis Cardinals. Craig has blown the save here in the top of the eighth inning. Coming to bat is Bob Uecker. Bob Uecker is one for one. He has been hit by a pitch twice. Craig is at the mound. Uecker is at the plate. Runners on first and second. The Cardinals are tied up, tied this game up. And here we go. It is a 42. 
And here we go. There we go. We got this one going down real quick. Bob Uecker hits a ground ball towards first base. Here comes Gray to grab that ball. And he gets over there, trips over the back, but holds on to the ball for the out. Bill White takes third. I want that show. I want that showing. No, let me go here. Bill Wright is at is at third. Jerry Busey takes second base. Craig is hurt. Craig is hurt. They're coming to take a look at him. They're going to take him out for the game. They're going to have no choice. We're going to be bringing in a brand new relief pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. Craig is out. Runners on second, third, one down. Euchre is out. Euchre is out. The next pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds will be Jerry Arrigo. Jerry Arrigo is being called in by the by the the announcer. Craig is hurt on ah, tripping over first base, trying to get that out as fast as he can. They will check later on to see how many if if he's going to be put on on the DL. But Jerry Arrigo is coming at the bat. He has been so far. He's been with Cincinnati for a few games here. Okay. Gary Regal's been on the Reds for a little while. I've got him so far in 12 games. He has started four. He has blown one save. That by choice. Remember, in, in, this, in, the, in the way we play here, we play with whoever was on the board first. Then I have the option. If I don't have rice, if I don't have rice running sub, I will fix that. Okay, hang on here, real quick. Okay, let me take a look. Yep, I got you. I got you, rice. Because I also now, if you got a website for your baseball cards, I will not have a problem. If you don't mind, I will save them as images, and on my Delphi form uh, page that I do for. Digital Diamond, I will um, I will post them up and I will give you a shout out every time I post one of your baseball cards up on Delphi Forms thing so you know that I'm giving you the credit for the photo. Okay, otherwise I get them out of uh, I get them out of Dave's trading uh, place. Anywho, here we go. Regal is on the mound. Regal so far this season has, like I said, twelve games, four games, started a record of two and two. Been involved in 32 and in third innings. Has struck out 26, walked 26, given up two long balls. Has an ERA of 7.79. His last 10 games, or eight games, the ERA has been 7.22. He does get racked. Though his last game out was decent through one, one two-thirds innings. Gave up one earned run on three hits. Walked two, though. So he is having troubles. The Reds are sticking with him, but he is the next pitcher. So here we go. Runners on second, third. The infield will be in. As I always play. Here we go. To one down. Can the Cardinals get can the Cardinals advance? 56. And Shannon hits it high, hits it shallow in the outfield. Stepping back on that way is our shortstop. Is the short is the shortstop Cardinals and he's able to make the grab. Runners hold. We have two down here in. Here in the in in the top of the eighth inning on a two-two game, Dan Dennis is due to pit is due to bat. I am not going to let him. We are now going to go off. We are going to go off the reservation for the rest of the game for the Cardinals. We're going to go off the reservation for the rest of the game for the Cardinals. Officially, he was the only substitute in the entire game for pitching, so I get to pick any other pitcher I want. Uh, I will be looking at the Cardinal pitchers as I go along. I know I do know who they are, but I see advantage of this game sometimes. So, we're going to bring in a pinch hitter for Dennis. We're going to bring in Kurt Flood to pinch hit. He'll be the first one. I think he's, he's probably the, the wisest choice for this game. For this one here. So, let's bring him in. Kurt Flood will be pinch hitting for Dan Dennis. He's thought he's going to have the day off. Not getting it. Kurt Flood currently this season. And, and he's in a pinch hit mode. It's not the first, the first time he's pinch hit this entire game. He has played in the, in the entire 61 games so far, about this way, batting 297. Six home runs, 24 RBIs, 20 walks, 29 strikeouts, does not steal bases. Not the better one in the league. 
He has not rested. He's been out since the 18th of... And I know I don't have him on the disabled list, so he's just been out. Nine doubles, three triples, two six home runs. I'm going to look at his record real quick see what happened here. He may have gone... He, oh, yes. Hang on, guys. I think I know what this is going to be. I may not be able... I may have to take him out immediately. Okay, Kurt Flood. This is 1965. Nope. Just had a week off. That's all. So he may have been, if they didn't have it back then, uh, and I could, so I can use him to pitch it roll. I uh, for my for my own eyes. Um, back then, if you remember, they always, were nowadays we have the seven came of. Uh, I'm in the. Uh, <clears throat> they had the seven day. They had the seven day injured list. They didn't have it back then, so he may have been on it, but we're going to use him anyway. So, Kirk Flood is pinch hitting for Dan Dennis, the pitcher, who will be the pitcher of record. Roger Craig blew the save as we know it. Here is the pitch, Kirk Flood by Gary Rigo. 32 with two down. Never know what's going to happen here. And Kurt Flood hits, hits a hits a speed. Just hit it weakly over towards second base side. Able to pick it up is Pete Rose. Flips to first, and they end the inning, but the Cardinals get one run on three hits. There were two runners left on base. Roger Craig was injured. He'll be out for a little bit. We'll find out later on. And Kurt, Kurt Flood does it that way. We have a 2-2 tie going into the bottom of the eighth inning. Pitching for the St. Louis Cardinals. Will be Barney Schultz. And I've got a couple of pitches in there I could use. And you guys be surprised who a couple of them are. Actually, we're going to bring in Hal Wudeshik. Hal Wudeshik for the St. Louis Cardinals. Relief pitcher. Came out, uh, was with Houston for, for, actually will end up with Houston down the road. So far, this is his fourth game with the Cardinals. He was traded to the St. Louis Cardinals. Because so far, he's been in 23 games here with Houston. He has two saves. For the St. Louis Cardinals, he has an ERA of zero. Three he gave up uh, so far three hits, two strikeouts. Walked no bite, no earned runs. He has an ERA for the season of 2 236. Whip of .73. Batting average against is 158. He's only given up, like I said, two long balls. Struck out 14, walked seven. So he has an excellent record with the Houston Astros. I just got to go find it. We won't do that here because we are running a little long for a normal game here. I do apologize again for the length of the game. This is not one of my features. You guys know that. Here is the pitch. The Budasik is up and coming to bat is Gordy Coleman. That's a 56 to Coleman, who so far is 1 for 3 with a home run. And Budasik strikes him out. Way to start the start thinking off. Hal Budasik coming up the bat will be the third baseman, Darren Johnson. Darren Johnson so far has flown out <coughs> to left, grounded out, and he has struck out. Woodshick's ready to go. Here is the pitch. 62, and Johnson's got a piece of that ball. Hits it up, hits over towards first base, and he got on the ground. So almost has almost caught our first base. And why does that just went up, on, went up, hit him in the chest? He has to go grab the ball, flip, gets over to first base real quick. And gets Johnson out on the unassisted, but that almost turned into a real situation when it hit him in the chest and dropped him. White had to stop for a sec. Takes first base, and we have two down. Two up here will be Johnny Edwards, the catcher. He is 0 for 2 with a walk today. <clears throat> Average is still bidding over 300. Here is the pitch to Edwards. And it is a 12. He's got a piece of the ball. Right up to our second base, and has to be snared down, and on the thrust will be our man. Busiek, Busiek on his knees, fires towards first, makes the play. I have been steaming rice running today for almost two hours. I normally get done within an hour, 15, hour, hour and a half. Uh, this is sort of a lesson for uh, Eric from our higher ground game because the way I started, so you can listen to me a little bit. It's been a long time, trust me. 
No, I don't normally steam this long. And it's the first time I've, I've streamed in, in about two months. So, uh, I haven't streamed lately. I just haven't felt like it. It's just been that way. And I'm glad now that I got a, a, a mini pressure, a couple mini pressures off me, I can come back and play. So, I'm not too worried about that. All right. We are in the top of the ninth inning. It is welcome to the Cardiac League. This is why it's called the Cardiac League, because I do. Oh, thank you. I dropped. This is the Cardiac League, guys, because take a look. Two to two game, top of the ninth inning. This is heart attack and pucker power time. Here we go. Gary Regal's back on the mound for another inning. Already the D rate. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Here is the pitch to Lou Brock. Top of the ninth. 55. Lou Brock gets out there and he hits out towards left center field. This is going to be dropping in. Yes, it is. Coming grab that ball will be Tommy Harper on the fly. Fires it in towards second. Brock will hold it first. We have no out. Runner on first base. Top of the ninth inning. Do up is Dick Grote. Dick Grote so far today is two for four. He has grounded out, popped out, and hit two singles. Brock's at first. Here is the pitch. 15. And Grote heads out towards first base. Gets out there towards left center field. They had the hit and run on. I didn't know about it. That's cool. Gets out towards left center field, though. And he hits it deep in the left center field. So he gets down on the hot pit with Brock's speed. He's going over towards third easily. Grote is at first. Cardinals are threatening. Arrigo is done. With that D rating with Brock on third, Arrigo is done. Coming in the pitch for the Cincinnati Reds will be the fourth pitch of the game, Jim Duffalo. He is the last of the name pitchers of this game. Arrigo is done. Jim Duffalo's coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim Duffalo so far this season is 3-1. He has two saves, been in 20 and two-thirds innings. Struck out 16, walked 14, has given up two long balls, has an ERA of 3.48. His last eight games has been 2.92. He lost his last game. He threw on the 20th of June against the Cubs, gave up the winning run, and a very tight, tight ball game. So, Jim Duffel is in here against the St. Louis Cardinals. He has faced them before. He's pit thrown three innings, getting up one hit, two runs. Struck out one and has walked two against the Cardinals his last, his last two times up against them. Duffel is on the mound. He is ready. He is an A-rated pitcher. The infield with no out will be in to get the play at the plate. Here is the pitch by Duffalo 2. Phil Gagliano who is 0 for 4 today. 41. Gagliano. Oh! Play one for the out. out. Is that Okay. We need to cut off the run at home, guys. That's the first time I've seen this. Uh, I get to make the option whether to cut the run off at home or not. Somebody put this in. Thank you. Cut off the run at home. Fielder's choice. Gets over towards second base. Rose gets a fire. Fires in towards home. They're not going to take the chance here. Yes, Brock got. Grunt will take second. Gagnon will take first on the fielder's choice. Holy mackerel. Something popped up I never saw it before in the game. And Eric didn't tell me. I'll get Eric for that later. Actually, I'll get Cyrus for that one. Holy mackerel. Oh, my God. They're starting to get some truth and some real good play-by-play -play in here, guys. Oh, my God. If that shows up on the screen, let me know. I had an option to either throw it to home to get the out or get the double play and let the run score. Cool. Ken Boyer's off the plate. <laughs> I'm sorry. He is three for four. Jim Duffalo on the mound. Here we go. Here is the pitch. 31. And Boyer hits it towards our first base. Gets over towards Duffalo. Duffalo fires towards first. It is not a fielder's choice. Grote will take third and. Gag the at second base. Two down on the, on the ground out to Duffalo. We have two down here. Top of the ninth inning. Bill White is up to bat. He is two for four. He has hit into a double play, flown out, and got two base hits. Runners on second and third. Two down. Duffel is up there. Here we go. It is a 66. 
That is never good. We've got a chance here to try to save something. Don't see it happening. Bill White gets it out there. Jack's out, and he slams it. Gets up that he connected it all. Bill White has, has made a brought the comeback for the Cardinals with a three-run shot in the top of the ninth inning. Bill White all the way out there towards center field. Gets over there. All Pinson could do is look at it. Deep, deep out, and the Cardinals take a 5-2 lead. They have come back. The Cincinnati pitching once again has failed them. Duffel's there on the mound. Gave up three runs real quick. He will be the pitcher of record. Here is the pitch coming up the bat. Will be Jerry Busick. Then the Cardinals are now relaxed. They can breathe, and it's a 14. That is a walk by Duffel. He got rattled on that pitch. That is his first walk of the game. Through up here is Bob Euchre. Bob Euchre is one for two. He's grounded out the first. Got, got Craig, uh, Craig out of the game. Single has been hit twice by a ball, by a pitch, by Jim O'Toole. Here is the pitch. 25, and Bob Euchre hits out towards third base. Just able to pick that up. Fires towards first, makes the play, and we have three down. But the St. Louis Cardinals on three hits. A fantastic running. Even though Brock got the out, Cincinnati kept in there, and it became a 5-2 game. Was it a mistake for Cincinnati to throw it to home? Or and or could they just gotten the double play? Nobody will know. We'll have to ask the manager after the game. Due up here is Leo Cardenas. We are in the bottom of the ninth inning. On a two on a five-two game, Cardenas is up. Woodishick's on the mound. Here is the first pitch bottom of the ninth here. 41. And Leo Cardenas hits out towards shortstop. Able to pick that ball up is our is our shortstop Dick Rump. Dick Rump's able to get the ball fires towards first. Makes the play. We have one down in the bottom of the ninth. Do up is the pitcher Jim Duffalo. I don't think I have anybody. Yes, I do. Pinch hitting for Cincinnati coming in. They're gonna bring in this young, they're gonna bring this young fella in here. We'll talk about him. His name is Tony Perez. Tony Perez has been involved so far in three games. He's a recent call-up. Or, or pitch hitting. He's bat, he pitched hit three times. He's batting 333. So far for the season, he is batting 284. Five four runs. A little bit decent pop. 15 RBIs. Has eight doubles, a triple. Struck out 24 times. A little bit loose with the bat. Has got 31 hits. Scored 27 runs. Batting 284. His last 10 games, though, he's starting to improve. Hi, Rhyme. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see everybody. So far, those last 10 games, he is batting 297. Got a home run, three RBIs. Has struck out seven times. Walked twice, getting a little bit more patient. He is, uh, uh, for the last five games, he has managed to get a hit out there. So he's doing well. So here we go. Woodshick versus Perez. Can Perez get on the base? Get on the plate. Here we go. It is a 24. That does not sound good. And he has struck him out. Perez strikes out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Woodishick heading in there. That's the second strikeout of the game. As everybody knows, Woodishick came in and pitched in the eighth inning. Just so you guys know, another one of these pitches that can throw more than one-third of an inning. This is not the girly manly league of 2018-2019. This is real manly baseball. That's what I like to call it. As everybody knows. Coming back will be the top lineup, Tommy Harper. Tommy Harper so far today is 0 for 3. He has grounded out three times and walked. Couldn't get out of the infield today. Here's the pitch by Woodshick. 34. And he's got a piece of that ball. Which way is it going to go? And he hits it deep towards center field. That's heading out towards that center field area again. Flying back out that way is our center field. Mike Sheena. Mike Sheena makes the, throws himself body out there. Makes the diving grab. Holds on to the ball. That is the game for the St. Louis Cardinals. Five runs, 12 hits, no errors. Cincinnati Reds on a two-hitter by St. Louis pitching. Two runs and two hits. A two-hitter thrown by the pitching. It was not a complete game. And so the Cincinnati Reds lose 5-2 on their pitching. 
so as we go here in our game, our nine things, our, our nine things synopsis will be sponsored by Clifford Jacobs, Plymouth Valiant, over at 499 East McMillan for fine service before and after the sale. See Clifford Jacobs, Plymouth Valiant. And they're having racing tonight at Hamilton Raceway. Harness Racing, 9 post, nightly, and post time is at 8.30. Sign up now for your brand new 1965 Buick to be given away. And bonus drive for $1,000 on June 10th. From the June 10th contest. June 30th. No purchase necessary at the racetrack. Here we go. Let's get the synopsis of this game down here as I like to do it. So let me save this. I always save the game, Eric, by the way. So we're going back to lessons for Eric, guys, so bear with me. As I get this out here, okay. All right, there we go. Save that. All right, now. Thank you. All right. As we said, Craig gets the blown save. Duffel got the loss. Now, Regal got the loss. Never mind. Very good. Okay. How Woodshit gets the victory. He's third of the year. But Roger Craig definitely got the blown save on that one. All right, everybody up. Come on. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yeah, well, I'm here. All right. While I'm here, I'll do it from I can do it from here. Hang on. It's not where I want to do it, though, but. All right, there we go. Okay. Let's see if I do this. It's been a while. Bear with me. All right. Hang in there, guys. No, don't want the ball roller. Get out of there. No, no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's what it is. That's what it is. Ah! I just learned it. Let me get out of here. Okay, get yeah, Cancel. No, cancel. Cancel. Ah, I got it. Hold on, guys. All right. Da, da, da. Nope, yeah. There we go. Hang on, guys. Like I said, it's been a while. All right. All right, there we go. Okay. Da, da, da. Okay, there we go. All right. So for any of you guys who know how I am, I like showing this. And hopefully it's showing there for you guys, too. And I think it is. All right. This is what I print every day, Eric, Okay. This is what I use. I can pull, whoop, no, 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 the one exit. All right, there we go. Okay. Here's our game. As you can see it from, from my, my perspective. As Al always goes. Okay, now I always listen to Al. Pitching first for the Cincinnati Reds. Jim O'Toole got involved in six and two-thirds innings. Gave up that one run in the seventh. Was pulled because he's already in his D rate. Walked three, struck out two. Hit two bad, hit Bob Uecker twice. Was given a warning. Roger Craig came in, pitched two-thirds of the inning, and was injured. On a ground ball by Bob Buecher, Gary Rigo came in, gave up the winning run, or put the runner on board for the winning run, and Jim Duffel just helped along by the home run. For the Cincinnati, for the St. Louis Cardinals, Tracy Stallard pitched, loud, pitched six innings, two-hit ball, gave up the two runs, a home run to Gordy Coleman in the third. She walks eight, struck out five. And gave up his home run. Dan, Don Dennis came in to relieve his talent. Himself got tired as he was pulled for a pinch hitter. And Hal Woodshaw came in and won the game. Hitting wise for the Cincinnati Reds, like I said, the Cardinals threw a two hitter. The Cardinals team threw a two hitter. Gordy Coleman had one of them. It was a two run home run. Veda Pitson had the other one. Otherwise, so Gordy Coleman hit his fifth home run of the season, and he got his 32nd RBIs. The Reds left eight. There were no errors in this game. Very, very cleanly played game for the St. Louis Cardinals. Bob Uecker had the pass balls, we remember. Um, the wild pitch. We had a wild pitch out there in the game, too, by one of our pitchers. Jim O'Toole had the wild pitch. Bob Uecker had the pass ball. Bill White grounded into the only double play of the game. As the Reds have one double play, as Reds have one double play. It should have shown here. Yep, it did. Okay. 
But Bill White was the hero of the game with that three-run blast in the ninth inning. Three for five today. Fifteen putouts he put out, too. That's what I like about this. For any of you guys who play one of my other games that I'm no longer playing, or I'll play only on a part-time basis, this is the section I like the most. Fielding. How they did. Also tells me a lot of things, okay? And this is where Ron came in when he put his when he did his uh, crit critique of Digital Dime Baseball. This tells you right off the bat that I had a grand total of one. Three balls went out to the outfield. Everything else in the infield. 14 assists. 15 of that. Eight strikeouts, by the way. So out of the 27 bats, okay, only four went to the outfield. Very well done. For the Cincinnati Reds, uh, the St. Louis Cardinals hit four. Six out to the outfield. We didn't see too many line shots. A few pop-ups in the infield. We would figure that out by the by a couple of the put-outs. By Cardinals. They were put-outs, but they were pop-ups. They were infield hits, for, as far as I could see. And that's going to happen. Uh, the double play ball, obviously, that was in there. But, yeah. But if Aspen Jardy hits, no. They're pretty fair, fair even. They've got that They've got that stat down. Uh, for the ground out, fly out, line out, pop out ratios, they've got it down. Sometimes it pops up wildly like it did today. Cause you see a lot of pop outs in my in my play-by-play. -play. Otherwise, no, not bad at all. Okay, Bill White got it. Uh, Jerry Busek had his ninth RBI of the season from the young season. Dick Grote had his 31st. He also went 3 for 5. No doubles, no triples. Everything was base hits. It was a very well played game. Bill White now has 36 RBIs. Jerry Busek, Mike Shannon both had sacrifice hits. There were no sacrifice flies. And there were no errors. The Cardinals left 11 bases out there. 11 people out, out there left on base. 11 people. And that was a lot of, you know, quite a few base loaded chances. They had 12 hits. But in the long run, St. Louis 5, Cincinnati 2 in this game here. The first game of the National League side of the house on the 24th of April. Let me get this back here real quick, guys, for you. Hang on. Okay. No, I want the game. And there we go. Okay, real quick. It does black out, but it comes right back. Nope, don't want that one. That's, that's, that's my dice roller, by the way, just so you guys know. If you're looking at it real quick, that's my dice roller. I just, nope, 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 nope. I just got to figure out how to, I just got to figure out how to get in as part of the game. It'd be cool. All right, now, Eric, I always click on standings. These are my standings. Cincinnati, who's in second place, just played a bad game. Their pitching starting to fall apart on them just a little bit. They've been 6-4 of the last 10. Pittsburgh right now currently has a two-and-a-half game lead. I am not done with the schedule for the Pittsburgh, by the way. I still got the Pirates game to come up. They're playing the Dodgers. Uh, they'll be playing the Dodgers later on. Don Cardwell versus Don Drysdale will be playing in that game. I've got uh, Mets and the Astros, Jack Fisher versus Claude Raymond. Cubs and the Braves is Dick Ellsworth versus Tony Cloninger. Tony Cloninger, by the way, is in the top 10 of triples in this league right now in the National League. And to me, what should be the game of the day, Jim Bunning versus Juan Marichal as the Philadelphia Phillies play the San Francisco Giants. But let me show you a few things. Philadelphia's in 8th place. 15 back. The American League for the 24th is done. The Chicago White Sox are my lead leading team. Al does that a lot, by the way. Uh, remember on the great sports, it's okay. Uh, it, this has been a long broadcast, and I can understand. Plus, he's getting ready to broadcast one of his own. Uh, he does, on Saturday nights, he does a special show that a lot of us are invited to. And uh, it's, just a, it's just a chat show. But he gets to start at 10 o'clock, and he's very scheduled about that, and none of us argue with him. This is running longer than what it should have, so the guys who are staying here are very good about it. But this is more for Eric from Higher Ground Gaming. But I always post this up, Eric, here, okay? But you see how I did the text file? This is what I, this, okay, I brought up here. It's already been saved. It's in my files, I can, you know, I, and I'll save it again. It's already in there at 624, but I got it, you know, so I do that. And I always and, and I save it out here. The reason why I do this out in the box text, see right here where it's in there? It's for this one right in here in the bottom. Alright? Because what this thing does, uh, Eric, is this. I don't use this. I like it. It is real good. It's quick, it's clean, but it doesn't separate who did what. If I had a if I had a big game running. 
Ballstat does this too, but I know how to separate Ballstat. That's not a problem. Okay, but that's what this pretty much is. All right. My statistics, and I love my statistics. These are my favorites. This is team versus team, American League. All right. So the Red Sox own the Orioles. All right. And the Angels, though, they own a team number seven, which is the A's. White Sox, who are in first place in the league, have 10 wins over the Senators, okay, have only beaten them twice. Everybody plays each other 18 times in this league. That's the American League. The National League is just as crazy. There is no inner league, so I don't worry about it. The Phillies have yet to beat the Pirates, but they're just getting started in their, in their rivalry. The Braves have yet to beat the Reds. Reds are on the Braves right now, and they're team number 15. They beat the Braves 3 out of 3 to nothing. The Reds, though, have beaten the Mets 9 to 2, and that's how it goes. But this is like, you know, this is what I like about this. This is cardiac baseball, as you can see. I sure will. Do I have, have I subscribed to you yet? Let me take a look. Hang on. First time I've seen you up here, sir. So you must you you must forgive me. Hang on here. I'll just I'll take a look here. Yes, I am subscribed to you. Ah, there we go. Okay, I forgot to get my notifications up for you. Oh yeah, I forgot to get my notifications up. That's my fault. All right, you're all set now. Okay, I am sub to you, sir. I am, and I just put a notification button up there, so you know I'll get your notifications. So anyway. I hope I wasn't talking out of my head. I was right. In the national, in my National League round here, and you guys should all see because I have moved from the channel. I just remember how to do the channel. There we go. Henry Earns leading the National League at batting with 347, followed by, of all people, Cookie Rojas. Frank Robinson is in third, 337. He is in a battle right now for possibility of the Triple Crown for 1965 for the National League. 18 home runs, 59 RBIs. Did not do well today. He has 54 runs scored. He has a 650 slugging percentage. OBP, that's nice. Hit run, 90 hits. That's the only one I don't bother with on base percentage. Actually, on base percentage, 437 for Will McCovey. It's the OBS, whatever the hell it is. But that's what they're batting right now. Quickie Rojas, Frank, Luke Brock is batting 333. This looks a whole lot better than what it could, what it is. I could transfer to Excel, but why bother? What you want is go to Excel. The first thing you want to do is save it to text. And it's a whole lot easier to broadcast text than it is an Excel file. Trust me. On the other side, over here, I've got my other hits. Okay. In the National League, well, who we're doing right now, Henry Aaron has 22 doubles, followed by Frank Robinson. Roberto Clemente has eight. I have eight players at four. One of them is the pitcher, Tony Cloninger. William McCovey has been walked 56 times. Uh... Lewis of the, of the Mets has struck out 57, followed by Dick Allen of the Phillies at 54. Lou Brock has been caught the most times. He is in second place in stolen bases. Been a real tight race for that. On base thing right here, on base of base uh, is 106.6. I don't like that, I don't, and I don't use it. It's the one stat that doesn't really belong here. But I, it's okay. I don't argue. With, I, I don't argue. Cyrus has done a great job with this game, and he's actually built this up to a real powerhouse stat thing. National League pitching. I only have one pitcher with 10 wins. Everybody else has eight. I like this. Is what I like about this league. Sandy Koufax, though, is tearing up the strikes. He has 155 strikes, followed by Juan Marichal, Don Drysdale. Don Drysdale has thrown 104 3.1 innings, okay? He's already thrown most of what the uh, <clears throat> girly manly baseball players are doing now. And it's 162 innings to be qualified at the end of the season for all the, all the awards. Warren Spahn, the Mets, has lost nine. Warren Spahn, the Mets, in 1965, is about ready to get released. He is done. Alan Jackson, Al Jackson, the Mets, also has lost nine. Bruce of the Astros has lost nine, okay? Bob Bull finally got his first win the Cubs, just the way it's going. Because at the same time, Ted Abernathy leads the National League with 11 saves. Sandy Koufax is a whip of .88. And Chris Short of the Phillies and Sandy Koufax of the, of the Dodgers are fighting it out for the ERA uh, lead with, with Cloninger. That's it for right now. And this is before, but we're still off the All-Star break, just so everybody knows. 
Now, the stats in the National League, that's what I also like. Home run leaders. Larry Jackson, the Cubs, has given up 21 home runs, followed by Warren Spahn, 19. Don Drysdale has also given up the gopher balls. The pillow. Complete games, Don Drysdale has 10. Sandy Koufax has 8. And as I laugh like hell, and this is the God's honest truth, okay? As I laugh at it now, I've got, for the top 10 the National League alone, 18, 16, 34, 48, 60 complete games. So far, I have not reached the All-Star break. In 2018, for the entire major leagues, I've over, uh, God, what, I can't remember how many games it is. 42 complete games total for the entire league, for the entire season. Think about it. Sandy Koufax has the lowest batting average against. 165 fall by Cloninger of the Braves at 188. Sammy Ellis of the Reds is 199. They're the only players under 200. Sandy Koufax so far has thrown the most shutouts. He has four. Everybody else has two. This game is tough on shutouts. Walks allowed. Bob Fields allowed the most walks from the Pirates, 64. Blown saves. Al McPhee so far as three against. Not a stat that I take great shot in in 1965. When I get when I start doing a 70s thing, I'm going to, but I think I'm going to keep because I'm dropping out the of my 60s project in Digital Diamond. I'm going to pick up. I'm going to put National Pastime in in the 60s. I'm going to use and Cyrus. Don't get me wrong. If you're listening to me, I'm going to use NPNG for the 70s. And I'm going to play with that. Um, Ken Bernier has been chatting with me. Or Ron Bernier has been chatting with me. We found out we were in the same state. Ron Bernier is out of Auburn. Ken, if you ever want to do a thing on, on sports games, there's a fellow named Ron Bernier up in, a, uh, up in Auburn. He is running NPNG. You ought to do an interview of him and see how he came into this thing. Just a thought, Ken, because you're always up in New England anyway. Besides that, there's a couple of decent places. There's a nice little Italian restaurant out there with the old Bates Mill up in Lewiston you ought to go to. All right, the American League. Let's start with the batting. Okay, we'll look at the batting for the uh, Amer- National League. I showed you the batting. Let's go to the American League real quick. Uh, this is this is also for, like I said, this is for Eric. <coughs> Tony Lee is batting 372. He's got a way lead over of all people. Jerry Lumpy of, of the Detroit Tigers and Rocky Calavito of the Indians. Only 11 American League batters are batting over 300. That's why I like this, too. Home runs is Harmon Kilber with 17. Tony C is at 13. If you remember in 1965, Tony Caniglero won the bat- the home run title with the lowest amount of home runs in the modern Amer- in the modern major leagues with only 32. RBI leaders is Harmon Kilber with 65. His batting average right now is 306. Tony Oliva leads in runs 61. He's been knocked in a lot. He also has 99 hits. He's going to be probably the first player to hit 100. His striking percentage is, is owned by Jim Hall of, of Minnesota at 602, followed by Frank Coward of the Washington Senators at 581. Nine. Oops, I'm sorry, I got all these over here. Joe Pepitone, in my last game, hit a second grand slam of the season. The game was a blowout, so I didn't do anything with it. Tony Oliva leads the league in doubles. Zoyal, and I hope I pronounced that right, Zoyal Frasales is leading the league in triples in the American League. Dick Hauser has the most walks. Burke Campanaris has 27 stolen bases. He has very rarely been caught. This is the way the game's going. Dick Hauser, though, has 23 of all people. And Frank Coward leads the American League in strikeouts. He's been struck out 64 times, followed by Ed Brinkman. Don Locke used to be in there. My pitching leaders. I actually have two players in the American League uh, with uh, ERAs, as you will see in a second here, with ERAs under two. Wally Bunker of the Orioles, which is starting to catch up on, but Sam McDowell with a 1.97 ERA, followed by Bill Stafford of the Yankees. He's still hanging in there. And George Burnett of the Angels. That's why I like doing the way that's why I like doing the way I do with simulation, plus I follow who the players were in the game for the historical purposes. No, am I gonna come close to what the historical game are? I can already see it now? No. But I'm keeping up with the game itself, and that's what helps up. I'm playing the players who are there. There's not. Clint makes it up. I make it up only when I have to. And even then, 
I've got pitchers out there that there are games that went to complete games. I didn't use the pitcher. So I've got the options. Sam McDowell has 10 wins. He's the only one in the American League, followed by Camilio Pasquale and uh, I believe it's Fred Newman of the Angels. Sam McDowell is tearing it up in strikeouts. He has 125. Only Sandy Koufax has more. Sonny Siebert has 93. Earl Wilson of the Red Sox is in there in the top, top 10 with 76. Newman of the Angels has 127 innings, followed by Camilo Pasquale and Mel Stoudemire of the Yankees. God rest his soul, and he, he produced a great kid, too. Phil Ortega of the Senators has 10 losses, followed by Dave Moorhead with 9, Bill Bombacat with 8, but Bill Bombacat is on a current winning streak. He's won the last four. Stu Miller, or Steve Miller, I think it is, of the Orioles has 12 saves, followed by Dick Raddatz with 12, Al Worthington of the Twins with 10. Uh, Buzzart of the White Sox and Denny McClain of the Tigers both are, have a whip of .097 on for this game, followed with Bill Stafford. I, the whip is one of the few stats I like. I truly like the came up modern. Robert Roberts of the Orioles is getting up 18 long balls. Not surprising. Hank Aguirre of the Tigers has 17. Sam McDowell has thrown eight complete games, also with Newman of the Angels. The Angels right now lead the league in complete games. They have 16 that I see right here on, on, on the top. Sam McDowell has only given up a 160 batting average, along with Wally Bunker at 185 and Danny McLean at 192. Sam McDowell has also thrown four shutouts. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six pitches with two. Camilo Pasquale's given up the most walks, 61, followed by Rudy May, Jim Bouton of the Yankees. Of sore arm fame in 1965. Ron Klein the Senators has blown the most saves. Let's see what I can come up with here. Uh, take advantage, Eric, of showing the stats when you're broadcasting. But once when you do once a month, something like that. The leading hitting streak is Veda Pence. He had 20. Don Demir of the Tigers for the longest time was at 19. This is something special that Eric, that uh, Cyrus and I bought, got into. Good game. We've got nine players who've had five who've had five hits in one game. Most current ones: Phil Gagliano of the Cardinals. Nobody's hit more than three home runs. Only Al Kaline, and of all things, the pitcher Gary Arrigo in, his, in one of his complete games hit three home runs. I like to have died when that happened. That made me laugh. Very, very funny when it happened. I wish I'd broadcast that game. Stolen bases. Tommy Harper, Burke Camp Bears have all done it three times. I do it by player, by games. Most of the stolen bases in the game have been six. Home runs in the game, I've had seven, five times. By teams, if I want to go that route, I've got them all. Now, this is what I'm finding out. Let's go to uh, American League batting. The league batting average in the American League right now is 244. That I'm showing right now, okay? Since I've changed the dice to ball roller. The American League batting averages, and I'll go to the Major League game, Major League. Up, 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 up. Okay, Major League. There we go. All right. I don't want today's. In 1965, for the American League, total, their league batting average was 242. I'm basically .002 over. Not bad for this time early in the season. So this could, you know, I, I could obviously go up. In the National League, their batting average for the season so far, average is 249. In the National League here, their finishing batting average was 249. I am on the money. So the game is close. That's why I like the game. Okay. Eric, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, Cyrus, if you have any comments, if you listen to this game, please do, because I know I made a couple mistakes in here. Again, I've lost my touch, so please do help. I can always use it. Uh, Cyrus, Mark Ruck, uh, Steve Savage, all the guys over at Delphi Forum. Guys, I post my games to Delphi Forum. 
please go to Delphi Forum, go through them, and look at who else is out there playing, and look at their seasons and stuff. King Ichipu, who is one of our players out here, watches and does this game. He's got a beautiful project out there at Delphi Forum. Please read it. It's excellent. Um, everybody, please, the Delphi Forum. I've got MPNG. I'm going to put, i got all sorts of seasons in there that I'm playing. Uh, I've got Status Pro I'm just getting started with. I'll be doing, uh, I'll be doing Card and Dice Baseball this week. We'll be learning MPNG, guys, so if I decide to broadcast, any help is always good. There's always good help. I've got Dice Baseball, and I've got Payoff Pitch. So I've got three game. I got three brand new games plus my Status Pro. We're going to play them all. I am on a light week. I am doing temporary work as a switchboard operator for a hospital, but I have a job. Matter of fact, I have an opportunity. I'm going to be spending ten days in England. I am going to become sales support and customer support for a biotech technological company that does antibodies. So I will be available a lot of times in the evenings and stuff like that. Anybody comes on up, we come on up and visit. You get to meet Honey Bunny. And we'll even go out and see if we can go chase a cup of coffee somewhere. I just don't drink. That's the only thing, okay? Anyway, guys, I thank you all for the long-winded broadcast. I do thank everybody. I want to wish everybody remember the greats. Of course, my old friend K KC, who and I have always chatting about baseball. Al, rice -Aroni, STM, Uncle Ron, of course. Anybody else who showed up? Did I miss anybody? Demos. Thank you very much for coming in. I think Rhyme showed up for a little while. Dave, Brother Dave Gardner. Thank you all very, very much for, my, for watching my return. I hope you all have a very great day. Thank you for watching the Cardiac League Radio Network. 5-2 to two game. As the game went, it was the St. Louis Cardinals 5, the Cincinnati Reds 2. This is Clint at Cardiac Radio League Baseball 4, National Pastime 3. Thank you very, very much, and do have a good evening. Oh, God, that was terrible. God. Holy shit. Oh, 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 oh. That's how you do it. I forgot about that. Ah, right, Jack Reacher. Oh, shit.
get us all shut down here, all right? Okay. All right, now. I'll open the email from here and I'll do it from here. So do that. So do not cut off Cyrus's email. All right. I'll do that. Not this time. I actually do only because I want to listen to him. I did shut the sound off. That's the smartest thing I could do. Okay. Let us shut you off. All right, let's get out of here. Yeah, I do. There you go. Yeah, I do. 